five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. You're listening to Tabletop and Beyond with your host, Justin. But before we get started, how was your Geek Week? And co-hosts, Dan and Jason. You have to be willing to let the dice help you tell the story. Okay, look, this year, I'm going to stop mispronouncing words. Join us as we cover board games to war games and beyond. Welcome back to Tabletop and Beyond, our Talking Warhammer segment. I'm really excited about tonight's show because we are going to talk about my first and, let's be honest, only love of Night Haunt. It's a faction that is near and dear to my heart that I've been playing since 2018. And who better than to talk about Night Haunt than Mr. Night Haunt himself, Nate Trentinelli. Welcome to the show, buddy. Hey, Justin. How are you doing, buddy? Good, good. So, uh, this is try two for us. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk to our listeners a little bit and let them know that um, <laughs> we recorded about 12 minutes before we realized that something happened with our recording setup, and so we're trying this over again. But we are committed to doing this uh, good the second time. It's very very nice of you to uh, take the take the blame at least part of the blame when we both know <laughs> it was entirely my fault. Well, I don't know about that. Well, at least you know. maybe not me personally, but something to do on my side. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's okay. I mean, it happens with podcasting, and uh, you know, we uh, we just uh, readjust and refire like the Marines do, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you have been playing Night Hot uh, 2.0. You just came out of Slambo um, it, down in Texas. You um, are doing well in the ITC. We're going to talk about all of that. Uh, before we get started in that, though, let's talk about what's on your hobby table. <clears throat> yeah, so, I, you know, as I was saying, it, the shock factor is going to be a little yeah. less, but I I have uh, 48 <laughs> Miramor and Banshees that I at some point will oh be getting gosh. through. Um, I, I don't, there's no reason to ever own that many, uh, but every time I opened up eBay, they were more staring at me. So I decided to just keep buying them, and here we are. They're such a cool model. I just, I couldn't have just four or eight or 12, you know, I had to go 48 of them. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I'm going to do them at some point, but really, as I was saying, I got a ton of Blade Geists to go through. I'm super excited yeah. about, actually, these Blade Geists, um, and I think we'll get in more about that. But more importantly, I've got, um, uh, like I was saying, a, a Lady Olinder, finally. Uh, I've been, only been playing the Army for like a year and a half and finally have myself a Lady Olinder, and pretty excited to get her done so I can can try her out and no longer doing pencil math to figure out whether I want or not I want to take her. And I'm just gonna bring her. Yeah. You know, she wasn't so bad in 2.0. She had she had some good damage output, but you had to put her like in the middle of the fight and um, for her to be really effective. Yeah, I remember. And, I remember um, her. She, yeah. she was a little bit of a grass glass cannon that way, right? Like you stuck her in right. the middle of the fight and she's gonna die. So, um, well, yeah, we'll see how she does in 3.0. I'm excited to talk about her a little bit tonight. Um, I did mention before, too, that, um, well, first off, saying 48 Miramor and Banshees the second time to me <laughs> still shocked me. Okay, good. It still shocked me, you know, because that, that is a lot of Miramor and Banshees. And I can't even think of a scenario where you may take more than 8 to 12. Yeah. And, you know. <laughs> you Maybe know I'll try is, a list. You know what you're going to do? Yeah, all beer more banshees. Only beer more. Uh, that's fantastic. What 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 you should do is just make a giant display board, and just have them like rimming the edges as like like a, oh. a an unholy choir. Yeah, that, that's you know, cool. Coming up with your main army. That, that is a really awesome. cool idea. That is actually a a really yeah. good use of them too, <laughs> because God knows I will never <laughs> actually play with them all. <laughs> right. Right. So there's some motivation to get it done. Maybe your display board, right? That's right. Yeah. So that'd be good. That'd be good. You were talking earlier too about how you had a, um, you were converting Dreadblade Harrows into hex. Yeah, race. that's and right. That is not a cheap endeavor. That's right. Yeah, I've got twenty, uh, twenty more in box. I've got, I guess, sixteen done, but, um, 
I, I don't actually use 16 because you can't. So I've got 15 that I use. Uh, okay, and then I've got right. 20 more sitting in box that I am going to convert up. And you just you kind of give them some grim gas sides and you, you give them some nice Rikonor armor and you yeah. convert them up just a little bit. and give them, I've been given mine shields from the uh okay. skeleton okay. the skeleton um what are they the death rattle skeletons from soul blight oh nice and i've been shaving yeah, them yeah. off and that's where i've you know night haunt is pretty much impossible to get any convincing free hand in anywhere and when i went into nice. lvo it's true they told me that i uh i lost i i, I lost some points and i didn't get um and i get my army picked to be one of the top 10 to put on the you know, the special board up front where everybody can look at it oh, because yeah. they said uh, I didn't get any freehand points. And I'm like, they're ghosts, dude. I'm I don't like, know where? where you want me to put where? freehand. Yeah, so <laughs> so I've I've shaved up some shields. I've stuck them on there, and that's where I am doing my freehand. And that's actually coming out okay. pretty good, I think. Yeah. Nice. That's very good. Um, I had my hex rays, and I hated those stupid little, like, ball things that were hanging off of their scythes <laughs> yeah yeah you know you know what i'm talking what about were those? Yeah, like, I've done, they're like, what, what were those yeah like like they're like what are those yeah like like they're like incense things maybe i don't like maybe i, I, I yeah. had no idea what they were and in the flames too like i thought were a little stupid right so i ended up shaving those off on all of my hex rays so that they were like straight up sides yeah instead of like you know like the weird the weird stuff so I like anyway, them so little um, that I used to look at yours when we would play yeah, and just hate on the unit. And you'd be like, no, dude, they're really good. I'd be like, yeah, but look at them. <laughs> and now I've got so this, many that they're in. Yeah. yeah. And now I'm absolutely obsessed with them. Yeah. 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 Well, they they were really good in uh, in like when you had the battalion, the Death Rider battalions, right? Yeah. The War Scroll battalions. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about whether I think you like them more than I do. So we'll talk, yeah, probably. We'll talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, I'm excited. I was, I'm excited because I think we have differing opinions on some of these units. But which um, is the best? Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. And I think that this book allows for that quite a yes, bit. Yes, it too, does. Right. So, uh, which is which is kind of nice. Uh, I am. I, I I think I I told you before. I picked up a whole bunch of dread uh, dread scythe heritance. <laughs> um, I had about 20. I picked up another 20. I would have picked up some Blade Guys Revenants um, if somebody that I know who plays Night Hunt didn't stake them out for me about 45 minutes before I hit up our supplier. <laughs> yeah. I saw so, the War Scrolls come out Guys and immediately, <laughs> immediately called Dutch. Yeah. And I'm like, Dutch, I got to get yeah. there. Yeah. He's like, yeah. I got some. And he had a I'm lot, like, yeah. too. He had 40 that I picked up. Yeah. Actually, oh 40 gosh. and then five or 10 in box. So I grabbed those two. <laughs> 50, 50 blade guys revenants. That's yeah. A, that's a good amount. That's a good amount. I mean, you'll use them. Like that's a. Oh yeah, that, I've played with a solid them. Yeah. List. Played with them already, so yeah. I've got some stuff to okay. talk about. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, we act. We have a lot of ghosts to paint. Thank goodness for airbrushes. That's right. Um, I know that you said you're a brush purist, but listen, an airbrush is still a brush technically, right? Technically, it says it in the name. <laughs> How can I? How name, can I argue right? with the English language? <laughs> yeah, right. How can I argue with this language? It has so many nuances. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> so yeah, very good. We got we got a lot a uh, lot of hobby stuff uh, ahead of us for sure. Um, getting ready because it's tournament season now. Yep. Right. Summer's uh, coming up. We're, yep. we're like in the thick of it. So tell me about Slambo. How how did that go this last weekend? So it's actually the first time I'd ever been to Texas uh, recreationally for something other than work, you know. Um, and oh yeah, right. I, you know, I work outside a lot with you know being doing what I do, so it was much more pleasant to be able to wear what I want. First of all, and second of all, be be around people that uh, were not in the same profession I was. So it was really really cool. Yeah. Um, I, I've heard a lot about the Texas. Uh, I guess play style and the meta that they play in and then just the people themselves. Uh -huh. And I was so pleasantly surprised to go down there and just have the best time with a lot of really awesome. nice, cool people who were not anything like the horror stories that I had heard about Texas. Really? And the Texas. Yeah. you. I think, I don't know if it was like an East coast kind of rivalry sort of thing that goes on, but you hear from a lot of people that start that traveled a lot back in the day that, 
particularly in Texas, they were very insular and they weren't really okay. interested in, in having people come in and play with them. And that is just was just not the case at all. And it was just so cool um, to be able to go down and play with all those guys and meet so many cool people. And I had such a good time with everybody. I didn't have a single bad game. Um, and you could tell uh, where the where the I guess the trouble people were uh, because all of the Texan uh-huh. people down there would tell you who they were and to avoid them. And it was awesome. And luckily for me, um, nice. I, I kind of started pretty hot and ended up towards the top tables and all those people were just the best people up there. So, yeah, I, I don't know if you want me to get into each game in particular or what, but yeah, I had such Let's a great talk time. About it, man. Yeah, we, we played, um, we played five rounds. So, well, normal so, GT. Yeah, yeah. Tell us your list a little bit. Tell yeah. So bit I've been first, playing, uh, I made some slight tweaks to my LVO list. Um, and I had okay. not taken Night Haunt to a GT before LVO. Uh, I'd only taken him to a co- right. couple RTTs where I would just bring piles of ghosts and kind of call it a day. But I was like, you know what? I want to try. Um, I want to try out some some actual good lists, and I want to try out figure cr- kind of crack this nut of Night Haunt in 2.0 and, and or trying to play a 2.0 book in a 3.0 world. And so right. I had a Nagash that I had finished for my Vampire Army. And uh-huh. they conveniently got removed from Legions of Nagash and turned into uh, the Soul Blight. And it kind of gave me a perfect opportunity to switch off of them, actually. Most people kind of switch on to a new book. I decided to move off of them. So I had my Nagash done, and I was like, how can I make Nagash work in my aunt? And he was he, he got his new War Scroll, and he everybody kind of was a little upset about the lack of ward save and how, how he look like he wasn't going to be as competitive as he was. Um, and right. I took that as a challenge. And so I took him, I, I built him up and I, my first iteration of the list had a spirit torment along with Nagash, um, who I made the general. Um, and I play an Emerald host and an Emerald host, your, I believe it's the, uh, guardian of souls has to be, yes. um, the general to get the command trait. Yep. And I think it's yep. like a free command point or something. I, I don't know, honestly. I, I, I think that's what it was. But if you take a spirit torment, you just don't get the command trait. So I've been playing with a command without a command trait um, just because oh, wow. Emerald Host locked you into it. But Emerald Host was such a good faction. So I took a spirit torment. And we, and we know how much you love the, um, the, the chain rasps. Right. Yeah, so I always used to give you so much about the chain rasp too. It's funny. So, so I took the spirit <laughs> torment. And I gave him the obviously the pendant of the fell wind, so he had uh, some yep. more move to him. And I took a block of nine spirit hosts. And I love it. Wow. I think most people look at spirit hosts and say like that's not a good choice. Well, oh, that's a it, tar pit of tar pits, dude. It is when you look at Nagash's new war scroll where every time okay. you do anything to bring back any sort of death model, you get an extra one. And can, the Spirit oh, Torment wow. does that, as long as you kill three models, um, the Spirit Torment yeah. does that in every uh, Battleshock phase, both mine yeah. and yours. So yep. it, once I got into combat, every single Battleshock phase, I was getting at least one Spirit Host back. And if I rolled a five wow. or a six on the Spirit Torment, I was getting two. So... They don't seem like they're that great until you start just bringing back tons and tons of models. Um, I would get right. one back. You get one back, you know, for your uh, hero phase or two back, two back for your hero phase because Navigash brings one and then he also brings his extra one. And um, and then in your Battleshock phase, you'll get an extra one to two. And then in their Battleshock yeah. phase, you get an extra one to two. So you're getting uh, uh, four to six of them back every single turn and it's or a battle round and it is just so strong um so i brought I mean, a block nine, of nine yeah block of nine i i think i lost like them one wounds, right? time uh it's 27 but 27, it's gonna feel like a lot more so i oh, i yeah. i yeah. think i lost them one time of all the six games i played at lvo um okay. and that was the last time i lost them was the last game um and it maybe I shouldn't have lost them but that's here neither here nor there uh, so yeah, they were just such okay. a great target. They do <laughs> mortals like back. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I was playing a, um, I was pl- playing a Phoenix Guard list of mostly Phoenix uh. Guard and Phoenixes, and yeah, just when you can't roll fours, you know, <laughs> if you when you fail yeah. your fours, you kind of you kind of lose your models. So that's kind of just what happened, and it's all right. I ended up losing yeah. that game by I think two points, and I shouldn't have. And it's 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 all good though. Um, 
Yeah, so the rest of that list had five hex wraiths in it because they pass off wounds okay. from the spirit torment. It's the, yep. the Emerald yep. Host way of making sure that your heroes don't don't die too fast. And then I had three blocks yep. of ten chain rasp. And playing through LVO, I, I went four and one, and my one, one loss was a minor minor loss that brought me to day three. Um, and then I played that yep. game against the Phoenix Guard, and I lost that one. Um, but it, I ended up sixth at LVO, which was awesome. And out of yeah. like the 190 or 170 people that were there, um, I did did super well with them. I, I Nagash is an all star. The Nine Spirit hosts were great. I was not super impressed with the Chain Rasp, just because I no, I really no. I really didn't have anything Shh. to do. I know, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really have them to do damage. You know, the, if you roll a ten on the charge, yeah. maybe they'll yeah. get a, a ping on a couple extra wounds here or there. But just generally, yeah, yeah, really, yeah. they didn't do too much. So. Going into Slambo, I, Slambo, I I thought, you know, I've got a bunch of these hex race in box. Let me just instead change my list. So what I did is it's the exact same beginning of the list um, up to the nine spirit hosts. Uh -huh. And then instead of one unit of five hex race and the 30 chain rasp, I just brought three units of five hex race. And Interesting. they are so good. Um, they've got yeah. a 15 inch move with the with the spirit torment around them. So yeah. um, from the pendant. They do mortals. Yep. They um, they pass off wounds from the spirit torment, so he's basically unkillable for a while. Um, and when you roll a ten on that charge with them, you're actually doing a significant yeah. amount of damage. And I just found is, that yeah. yeah, they they were just all stars. Um, yeah, anytime you need to do that that savage spearhead tactic, or you got to get an emergency extra couple models on an objective, well, there's your uh, there's your hex race. And when yeah. they, yeah, when they would retreat and fly over models, they'd do mortal wounds on a five up, right? I um I forgot to do that every game. Oh really? Um, <laughs> so yeah, I played tons so like of prep gimmick, games, right? and that's yeah, I played funny. so many prep games yeah. of Night Haunt. I played, I can't tell you how many games of Night Haunt I played, um with spirit with yeah. uh, hex wraith, and I still just did not do that a single time. And ah. looking back, it's like, oh my god, there's so many places that would have been so helpful. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I so, just yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I um I, I when I played it at LVO right with with um, the Death Riders, which was awesome because the Death Riders Battalion Scroll gave you that uh, fight with them on a nine up instead of a ten. Yeah, that's right. And that significantly in, increased your chances of fighting two times, right? But um, there was a moment where I'm fighting ogres, and it was um. Oh, man, it was like a duality style game. I don't think it was actually a duality, right? Where you had the two objectives. Yep. And I just would, he would like charge his gluttons in and then I would retreat them away, but like still like I'd fly them over, but still be contesting the objective. Like right. I never fought with them. Just I was like leapfrogging his gluttons because if I was stayed in combat with him, like they would just take a beating. Right? Yeah, exactly. So I just kept leapfrogging them, but doing all these mortals on him, and yeah, so just like free his, like chipping away. Oh man, it's just chipping away, and he's like, "How am I losing here? Like I don't understand. You're not <laughs> yeah. even fighting me, you know." So, yeah. So they they were pretty good. Um, yeah. So that's pretty. That's awesome, man. So you went four and one at Slambo. I did. Yeah. Um, which. It's so respectable with Night Hunt, dude. Like, especially when, like, and you were at LVO in the Age of the Dragons, like when that yes. new dragon yes. meta list yeah. came out and everybody was running them and they were, like, quote-unquote unstoppable, right? Yep. Um, I think it just took about a month for people to figure out the list and, and what to do with them. But Yeah, exactly. Um, but, uh, look, 4-1 at LVO, 4-1 at, uh, at Slambo. Like, that is so respectable because I think a lot of the Night Hunt um, ITC scores that we're seeing now are with a 3.0 book. Um, yes. Some of them. Yeah, yeah. Know. I think and so, yeah. Your scores are purely 2.0 so far at this yep. point. Yep, yep. And the list has only so. strictly gotten better. So it, it, I, I'm very yeah. excited with the way. Um, so my one loss at Slambo um, was to my brother. Uh, not happy about that one. <laughs> It's the first time I've actually <laughs> met him at any – I have been playing Warhammer with my brother for five, six years. It's the first time that we actually met up at any RTT or GT ever. Um, so not really? super happy to have lost that game, uh, being our inaugural one. But he won the whole event, so if I'm going to lose anybody, I guess it would yeah. be him. Yeah, so so my I, I guess 
quickly going through, um, I played a Blades of Corn list turn the game one and had Scarbrand oh, oh, and it had two Bloodthirsters and it had just some chaff or whatever, but it had an Incarnate in it. And that was the first yeah. time and only time I've ever played against an Incarnate. And Oh, did you bunch your things up? So yeah, so that got I me at Nova Open one year. I always tell everybody when I roll up to the table um, maybe you didn't have to do this back in the day as much, but with Nighthawk being super, I guess, unpopular right now, you kind of do. So I, I got up to the table and I tell them my whole shtick and here's all of the things I do and here's what my list does. Yeah. And a lot of people try to like hide and, uh, you know, be like, hey, do you know the army? Do I need to explain anything? No, yeah. cool. And then, right. you know, have a gotcha moment. But I don't like those. So I go over everything. Um, and yeah. I let them know exactly what I'm going to be doing. Honestly. Yeah, I, I tell them yeah. how to beat me, and then if they can do it, great. If they right. can't, it's just you know the way the game goes. But um, yeah. I told him about this cool thing that Nighthawk can do called sex Spectral Summons, and you can uh -huh. pull a unit and put them next to your yes. general, and it's awesome. Yep. Well, the Incarnate has Not this with rule. An incarnate. <laughs> the Incarnate has this rule that you cannot retreat from him. And oh. yeah, so so this is this is where it gets fun. So he had it bonded to his little blood secretor, which is a five wound hero, just the dude with the banner that uh -huh. makes everything else around him better. Yep, 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 yep. So what I did was I gave I took my spirit hosts <clears throat> and I'm like, you cannot kill all of these, I promise. And I chucked him at his incarnate. Yep. And he's nice. very confused because I did almost no damage to his incarnate. He did some back to me and it was yep. about to be his turn and his entire army is standing three inches away. And he's like, I have Scarbrand. I have two blood. Like, well, you're going to lose all of those models. And so I said, okay, yeah. let's find out. Well, at the same time, what I did was I arcane bolted with the gash um, 12 inches away off his blood secretor. Yeah. And I just killed him, right, nuked him right away. Yeah. And so that Which means is that a good his. one to choose. Absolutely. His, his, well, it's even better because it was bonded to the incarnate. So the incarnate is now wild, which means that it treats his own models as enemy units. So, yeah, I, he, he charges in. He does tons of damage to my uh, spirit host. I think I have like three left at the end. He was very surprised that yeah. even had any. But as I told him, I was like, you're not going to kill all these. But he doesn't seem to be too bothered because, you know, he's got my things in combat. I can't retreat out, yada, yada, yada. Well, yeah. unfortunately for him, I can spectral summon still. Yeah. So I just pulled my models out of combat. And he's like, what? Leaving his incarnate now That's touching... Amazing. All of his blood th th thirsters, and they're now oh enemy models. Oh my gosh! And he can't retreat out because oh the incarnate gosh. says you can't retreat from him. So he spent the oh entire game killing his own Fighting blood himself. thirsters. <laughs> You're like, I'll just uh, heal these so, guys up. Thank you very much. So the first thing I had done was I handed dusted the um, incarnate, and you can't kill it; just puts it down a power level. So it's at power level one right. or whatever yeah. it is. Every time it kills a monster, it gains a power level. And what he would do yeah. is he would kill one of his blood thirsters. But his bloodthirster would bring down the power level of the incarnate, so it just sat at one until he killed his last bloodthirster in round I think he was battle round five. So his incarnate is now free after killing his entire army oh and oh tried to gosh. move it towards me and I just handed dusted it again and it died. And then uh I think that entire game I killed uh ten blood reavers and five corn dogs. And he had nothing left that on the table because he killed his hilarious. entire army. It was it was amazing, and I think the best part about it was the guy was very good, very competent player. He ended yeah. up uh, four and yeah. one with corn, which is also impressive wow. on his end. Yeah, with yeah. with what the lists that were being run there was pretty cool. So I so I started <laughs> like, the game with I that, love... and it really could only get better, right? <laughs> like, like there's no way, there's no way after that great game that I'm gonna have a bad time at this event, and I was so just so happy. You're like I. I really love this incarnate model. It's great. Yeah, it's great. I don't know why everybody's <laughs> complaining about. <laughs> yeah, it was super cool to see. I, I'd never played against it. I just so I just kind of uh, just had his. It's not too bad when you have the other guy's army kill it for you. So that's what I did. Um, yeah. And I wish it was a play that I had thought of at the beginning, but I just kind of like chucked the spirit uh -huh. host in as I normally do, and then it kind of popped into my head as we were right. playing. So, like, um, oh, so yeah, yeah, I took a took a pretty good first win with that. Um, and it, it was probably the right move though because had you not put the spirit host star he would have come at you with it oh yeah so, no it, like, it was absolutely you know, turned out to be right and, yeah yeah as i tell everybody you know i so. i think you know i i end up doing pretty well at events but 
most of my game plan is show up to the table and then roll some dice. And sometimes I win. And then that, <laughs> that that's pretty much what happened. So, so that's yeah, awesome. so I won that game and I, I was feeling pretty high on myself and feeling like I kind of ran the world, right? Well, yeah, I kind of, I, I played into my next game and at, at, uh, at this event, there were tons of Ideneth. I don't know what it was. I, they just got a new book, right? So really? everybody's super excited yeah, about yeah. them. And Namardi are finally okay. So everybody wants to play Namardi. And I played this. Yep. My next game was against a guy named Brian. And he, he was playing Ideneth. He was playing a lot of Namardi. And he was playing um, just an Eidolon and the Achillean King that smashes your face. And yeah. Um, yep. But he was a pretty new player. And nothing against him, obviously. But we were playing uh, one of the missions where the three objectives were in the middle. Um, and so I just kind of yeah. put everything in the middle and I said, come get me buddy. And he, he obliged and he kind of just charged stuff in and, uh, all the smoke was, was settled after his turn and he had killed like four spirit hosts or something like that. And then obviously just ended yeah. up bringing them all back in my turn by my turn. I had them all back and Nagash just kind of did Nagash stuff and he killed his whole army and, and I won that one. I, I, you know, won that one by quite a bit. So at that point, I'm yeah. I'm two and zero, oh, and um, when you go to an event, really good now. when I when you go yeah. to an event, really I aim for three wins. Three wins is where I want to be. Um, so three when you for when you just it's respectable when you just grab uh when you just, well when you go to an event, you never know what you're gonna end up playing. Maybe you end up playing a bunch right. of people that are just killers, and they just yeah. they're just really good. And it, it, you know, it's not tons that you can do, and that's why I try to play quite a few events, but. When you get two right off the bat, you're feeling pretty good about yourself, and and um, yeah. I didn't think I was gonna be able to hold on to that luck. I had just played a guy that was pretty new, and it's not often that that happens on your round two. So my round three, right, I get right. paired into this guy. His name's Esteban. He's from uh, Dallas. Super cool guy. Okay. But uh, he was also playing Idoneth, and the Night Hall matchup in Idoneth is awesome. And I was talking to Brian, and he was just like, "What can I do yeah. differently?" And I'm like, "Honestly, man, your list is just not not the one for this." Um, if you're gonna play Idemeth, right. I think the best list you can have against my list would be just all the sharks, just as many Achillean yeah. Alapexes as you yeah. can get. Well, yeah, as luck would have it, because they have a lot of attacks. I mean, the problem, <laughs> you know, list of sharks, huh? As luck would have it, by <laughs> round mentioned? three, that's hilarious. Was nine sharks. <laughs> so oh, he had gosh. nine sharks, and he had uh, a king yeah. and some maybe another hero or so, but it was basically only sharks, and I could not believe it. We were playing a battle plan that was um, on the – you deploy on the short table edges, so super far deployments, and he just sat back, and I'm like, there's no way. Um, he's just going to blast me until I until I um, die. He's got four attacks with each shark, and they're shooting yes. 24 inches, and they're doing D3 yes. damage, and the rend doesn't matter. You know, they're normally rend one, but that's the big thing. It's like, oh, everybody, the rend one, it doesn't do anything. It's like, well, I am i don't ignore rend anyway. Yeah. So, like – it's kind of useless. He's just got tax, like the perfect right? list. The weight of attacks. Yeah. So then you yeah. get into combat with them, and they're super good in combat. And I'm just like, oh man, this is gonna be, this is gonna be brutal. Well. Yeah. If you roll four ups, you know, you don't really have to worry about it. So <laughs> that game was a lot of uh, just rolling four just ups. Roll I kind of. Up, I just roll took four. my turn, and I, you know, you mystic shield and the gash, and you, you can all out defense him, and so he's on a two up save, and he's like, you know, I'm not gonna shoot in the gash. It's just a waste. I'll try to kill the rest of your army, and, you know. Yeah. As we kind of have shown at this point, it's pretty much impossible to kill um, spirit hosts with three bloodthirsters and an incarnate. You're not going to do it with some yeah. shooting out of a, a shark. So, um, right. yeah, I just kept, just kept bringing back models, and we are playing the vice, so everything ended up being in the middle, and I just kind of stuck Nagash on the middle, and, and he just did Nagash stuff, and I, I killed everything again. And it was uh, it was pretty great. I, I couldn't believe it. I was 3-0 and on my the first day. That's all you can ask for. So at that point you're like, yeah, no you're going, you're going, you're finishing your day, you're you're three and zero, oh, you've got your night haunt. Everybody's like, what are you doing? How are you doing that? You know, it's like I just roll some right. dice, man. I don't I don't know what to tell you. Um, and <laughs> he's feeling super good about it. It was uh, it was three solid wins, three solid players, uh, three cool dudes from Texas that I wasn't expecting. Yeah. Um, so it was it was super fun. And I go around to these GTs and I play um I play with my brother a lot. I play with quite a few of these other guys that I have met from the Northeast that we just go to the same events and we just have a blast. We get Airbnb and we hang out with each other and it makes the, the yeah. competitive scene so much more fun when you have really good friends to go hang out with. Yeah. Um, winning the games is cool, 
but just getting to hang out and play play Warhammer with some cool guys is even cooler. So super fortunate sure. to have a, a great group of guys to go back to the Airbnb with, and we, you know, maybe had one or two beverages that maybe inhibited game four coming up a little bit, but you know, we were just, I was just super excited, super, super happy with the three Oh. And my brother was also three and Oh, and he was playing a, a nine storm fiend Skaven list. So we're both playing armies that are not known for being overly competitive and we're just doing great yeah. having a, having a great time. And um, we looked at the, after the dust settled on, on the end of day three He's uh, he's number three, and I'm number four. And yeah. they try not to pair you when you are on the same team your first day. Uh, but the second day, all right. the gloves are off, and, and you yep, can just get yep. paired into anybody. And the, we're looking at each other, and we're like, I think this is going to be it. I think we're going to be playing each other. And, um, yeah, game four comes up, and guess what? I'm in with my brother. And start. I call my mom. You know, I was like, hey, Mom, we're playing. Like, took a video trying to of us uh, yeah. actually like playing with each other. She's so used to us seeing us clear off her kitchen table to be able to play games whenever I'm home. Um, so she was loving it. We were loving it. it was great. Uh, great to play my brother. He's, That's awesome. He's he's really good. Obviously, he's uh, he's got a he great army. Good. He's got the yeah. perfect army to kill Nagash, and and I knew it was gonna be an uphill battle. So, <clears throat> um. He's got these storm fiends, right? That that shoot twenty four inches with their wind launchers, and they're oh they're Ren gosh. three, and their damage oh. D three, and they have three shots each, so it's nine shots coming out. Oh. And you like you look at the war scroll and you say, oh, it's it's only four to hit and four to wound, right? Should yeah. only be like two or three two or three wounds. Well, when you're as lucky as my brother, first of all, and then second of all. When you're when you're playing, of course uh, he's lucky, right? Exactly. When you're playing, yeah, he's my brother. I mean, he's he's got me as a brother. How lucky can you be? No, so he, he's got uh he's got the spell. It's called more more warp power that uh, Skaven get, and it lets you hit, reroll oh, hits right. and wounds, and it it drastically yeah. increases the power level of the of that unit. He's also got this ability that just plus one damage flat out to to the to the unit, and oh man, so yeah, so um. So it's just not great. We were staring at Ren 3, and Nagash hates Ren. He's got no ward. But it's a spell, right? Yeah. And I'm Nagash. I've got plus 3 to unbind. And lucky me, I got arcane terrain in my deployment zone. I'll stick Nagash on that, and he won't be able to get the spell off. Well, right. as luck would have it, um, I deny or I unbind every single spell he's got, except for the plus 1 damage one. And and he um, he decided not to shoot Nagash the first turn. And I thought that was a super interesting play. And it was because I kind of was able to stack some saves on the gash with mystic shield and, um, uh -huh. all that defense and finest hour. So he was going to be on his three up save and he just decided it wasn't worth it. So he ignored him the first turn. And so that allowed me to at least get in combat. Um, I killed a bunch of the storm fiends and there was like three or four left and, uh, his turn. He's like, you know what? It's probably not a great choice, but I'm going to shoot in gash. And he managed to get his spell off again for plus one dan or for the reroll hits and wounds. Awesome. Well, uh -huh. I don't have a finest hour this turn, so I'm only at plus two save. He's at three uh -huh. rend, yeah. oh, so I have a four up save. Yeah. I was just yeah. saving a bunch of four ups in the last game. How hard could it be? Well, he got <laughs> he got four hits, four wounds, and I failed every four up with Nagash. Oh, and then no. he rolled for his damage four d three plus one on each one damage, so four d three plus four. It's like, well, he's got 16 wounds. What's the chances, yeah. right? So what are the chances? Well, so you're saying there's a chance. Well, he rolled <laughs> three sixes and a five for damage. So he did 16 oh damage, and uh, he killed Nagesh. And that that was all she wrote. I managed to scrounge up some, oh. some other battle tactics and stuff. But, yeah, I ended up losing that game, and that was a heartbreaker. I was in the spot yeah. to win, and, you know, some dice decided I wasn't going to win. And, as I say so many right. times, I just show up and roll dice, and sometimes I win. Yeah, sometimes I show up and <laughs> roll some dice, and I lose, and that's just what happens. Um, but he ended up coming in to, in to win the whole event, and like I said, so it was super cool that um, I got to play with my brother, and it was so much fun. Yeah. Um, I couldn't have asked for a better game. So um, I played uh, – I mean, it sounds close, right? It sounds yeah, like it was super game. close. And, and playing uh, playing Night Haunt, playing against a, a list that was going to kind of have my, have my number – 
I was super excited and super happy with myself and the army that I even made it a game. So um, on paper, it looks like I yeah. should lose that straight up, and I didn't. And it was uh, it was pretty close. So super happy with that. Um, yeah. By round four, I got paired into uh, one of our really good friends who hangs hangs out with us at these events. He's uh, from Canada. His name's Carl. He's um, he's actually on the Season of War channel with Jordan, um, oh, and nice. he's okay. super solid player. And he's playing uh, the new Magatkin book, you know, Nurgle. Oh, okay. And All he's right. got yep. Yep. what I think he had ten flies and one of the. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. the pregame move the, things. This is the and, fly, uh, fly spam. Yeah. Yeah, fly spam. One of the fly spam lists that was there, and a couple other things, Lord of Affliction and stuff, and um, it's it's supposed to be a super hard list, right? Well, yeah. Actually, with my Aunt Han, I found that it's super easy. Um, they uh they just do not like Nagash. Nagash will eat their lunch for breakfast. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and he did, and I just kind of uh, he he tried to come in at me, and I hit him back harder than he hit me, and I outlast him, which is crazy when you think about uh, Nurgle. You're always right. thinking that they're super super tough. Well, yeah, not not spirit hosts with a spirit torment and a gash though. So um, I just kind of ground right, him down right. until he couldn't he couldn't really do much of anything, and I outscored him on objectives, and the gash just kind of bopped around and and just killed his whole army. And um, yeah. Yeah, it ended up being a little bit closer of a game just because the battle mission or the battle type with Feral Four Way and being able to pull a bunch of a bunch of objectives and stuff. But super cool, uh, super cool game, super cool list, super cool guy. He's such a cool guy. Um, had such a blast uh, with with my game game five. So my my game four was against my brother. Awesome game. Game five against one of my really good friends um, that I get to uh, see only when I go to these GT. So super super cool last day. Um, and I obviously won it, and that put me um into uh four and one the four and one bracket of the lists and there was yeah. uh 91 yeah. players and i ended up in ninth i think there um that's awesome yeah it, and i was only one or two points behind uh the the eighth the sixth seventh and eighth guy so you know had i had i gotten a couple extra points here or there uh, maybe i would have would have snuck into fifth or sixth or something um but yeah. either way, super cool. I, I just so so oh, yeah, pleased. Absolutely. You you cannot you can't argue with with a four one no matter what. So no, yeah, such no a cool way, way to yeah. end the end the book. Um, uh, you know, send it off and and I'm very happy with with the way the book plays and and really excited about the new one. And uh, that was the last the last GT that I'll be going to with the with the old rules. So from here on out, you know, smooth sailing to uh to three point book. Super excited about it. Yeah, and I think the next big one that you're planning to go to was the um, ACO, right? The Atlantic City Open. So I actually went last year, and I came in one? second last year with uh, Legion of Blood. Okay. Back in the day. Um, yes. I actually yeah. brought 80 chain rasps in that list too. That was that was oh my Le- old Legions in the Gash. It was so so much fun. Um, the ones but, that you didn't like, yeah. Yeah, the ones I didn't like. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, they complemented Blood Knights perfectly. But you were right. They do. They do. I will they say do. you were right. They they. You know, when you get 30 of them at a time, they can, they, a they yeah. can take a hit and they can dish out a hit. So many attacks. So, yeah. so I uh, actually will not be going to ACO. Unfortunately, I've got I've got some training I got to go oh, really? to. Um, oh, that's that bad. is, yeah, it's too bad. So, so I'm not going to ACO this year, um, which was too bad. I'm really looking forward to that one. But um, no, I think the next GT I'll be going to will be Summer Slaughter up in Pennsylvania. Um, oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, right, that's gotcha. in uh, when is that? That is July or August, I think. July, I think, yeah. Yeah. yeah July, I think. July, yes, that's um, right, July. And, yeah. And uh, you, uh, let's see, you normally go to Nova. Yep, um, yep, Nova. And yep. you normally always go to up to Du Bois, right? Up in, I will uh, be at Rochester. Du Bois, yep. I've got uh, Du Bois, Nova. We've got the Summer Slaughter one. There's a Season of War uh, one okay. that they're doing up in Ontario. And that is oh, in cool. August, I think uh maybe oh, august nice. sometime right. in there right. and then i've got um i will be going out to i'm actually flying out to vancouver um for one in wow. uh british columbia uh in september and then is that, is that one of the warhammer open ones or no no that's not it's just uh it's just the one okay. that they do up there um i know somebody from that side of the country in canada so i'm gonna go visit him and we're gonna play some warhammer nice so I went to uh, NOLA, yeah. the one in New Orleans for the oh, yeah, okay. for the opens, right. but I didn't go to any of the other ones. They they released the schedule a little late, um, and just with the yeah, with work schedule and everything, it's hard to take off time without knowing it previous ahead of time. So 
Unfortunately, I won't be able to make it out to any of those. West. <laughs> yeah, and it'd be like they were all out west. Like I think yeah, the closest yeah. one was in Chicago. You know. Yeah, so. it was Chicago was the closest one. I think, you know, being with, with James, um, I think he he's a part of that committee that kind of plans those. So he's yeah. he said that there's going to be some closer ones next year. He's already kind of figured out the schedule and he he knows um, to get them out ahead of time. So I think he's gonna he's gonna tell us all what those will be at least somewhat soon, so we can start planning for those. But but yeah, it looks like a ton of GTs coming up, and I've got plans uh, for Night Hunt for all of them. I'm so glad that we're getting back into you know these regular tournaments and things like that. Like, it's uh, it's just so nice to kind of be back to. It's starting to feel like a normal again, right? Yeah, and, yeah, um, it's definitely feeling that way. Like, I, I mean, even last year, right? You're like, ah, oh, is this tournament gonna happen? Like, some of them yep. did, some of them didn't, you know? And yep, yep. Now it's just like, okay, we're we're kind of getting back at it. So yeah, now I'm that very excited about it. Yeah, totally, kind of totally reopened, so we can we can get back at things. And um, I I I've always had a pretty good streak about not coming home with anything from any of the uh, tournaments I go to. You know, that whole yeah yeah con crud sort of thing. I, the con crud, I haven't. Yep, yeah, yep. I've never really had it. Never really got it. So I don't I don't know. Um, Try to, try to keep that streak. Let me find post, some wood real uh, quick. Let me just knock on that and then. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. I usually just get post uh, con like blues. Like I've just been so like gaming so heavy for like four days that like I go to work and I'm like I'm not rolling dice right now. Like what's <laughs> yes. happening? You yeah. Know what I mean? I'm every so time. Sad. Like every just, time. You know, like it's it's like I'm depressed. You know, because I'm not like you know actively trying to like compete in, in gaming and stuff like that i'm sitting there working on spreadsheets and it sucks <laughs> yeah staring I can, there's only so many times i can stare at a powerpoint before i really yeah. reminisce about the the weekend i just had i just had that with slambo this whole week has been pretty difficult to be honest um it's only wednesday yeah, right. oh no oh no yeah. i've still got two days yeah, yeah. um uh, you're you're replaying yeah. your greatest hits and your greatest losses right exactly so. yeah i'm thinking about that four up dice roll that i had against my brother Yep, exactly, exactly. So, um, all right, well, let's listen, man. Let's talk about let's talk about the new book. You know, sure. Um, you sent you you by proxy sent the rest of us night hunt players into into the mystic, and now we are now we're moving into the <laughs> that's right. Now. So we, yeah, we, that's we, right. We, we doff our hats at you, sir. Well done, well played, <laughs> and uh, a new a new era has begun for the ghosty boys. It has. So. Um, so like I was saying before we even started recording, uh, I don't want to take this time and do like a full like night hunt book review. I think there's plenty of those out there right now. Obviously like this got leaked so hard, right? Oh, yeah. So the, <laughs> the, which, which I mean, comparatively, like we didn't see any leaks for daughters of Cain. So I guess that book isn't as good. Maybe? <laughs> People just aren't excited about <laughs> it, I guess. Yeah, I guess not. So, um, but uh, you know, the like the honest war gamer jumped right on it, and he did a full book review. I I just saw a thing by Vince Venturella and Warhammer Weekly and Tom Long that they did their book review and all that stuff. So there's plenty of them out there. What I want to talk about is how do we use this book, right? Like yeah. how do we how do we get out of this book? Like what we need to be competitive at gaming tournaments and have fun and 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 there's a lot of different options so i think we're gonna have a lot of great discussion but what are your initial impressions from this book like overall yeah so night hunt has always been this thing where the heroes have these great abilities um and uh -huh. i think uh that has continued on in this book and they've they've done such a good job of all of the characters and heroes being unique but so, but yeah. still relevant still useful in their own ways and it, it's so exciting to come up with lists because there's no there's no one bad choice um you can just keep picking yeah. units and there's there's a place for it and there's a there's a thing that they do um i think part of the problem and one of the traps that a lot of night hot players maybe fell into pre previously and they might do it this time with this wealth of choice is all of the heroes are good and so everybody wants to bring right. all of them. And yeah. Night Haunt, to, to me, easy. yeah, it just has never been one of those armies that's superhero heavy. Because, yes, yeah. the, the the guys are great, and they'll buff up your units great, but 
you know, most of them, I think the most wounds one of them has is Olinder with seven. Maybe Arlock now, the seven, new guy, yeah. the new guy or whatever. I think is all, all, yeah, all, yeah, yeah. all rot, yeah. right? Seven wounds, all rot, which is almost yeah. nothing. So you got to be super is, careful. Yeah, You're, you will quickly kind of waste all your points away without really getting anything out of the army. So, yeah. So you you just got to well, pick yeah. uh, pick a couple uh, pick a couple heroes, play you know figure out what you want to do with them, and then and then try to maximize the way that they they are used. And um, I think I think there's a lot of really good winners in this book. Yeah, I think I think the hero point that you make is really interesting there um, because. In 2.0, you had to have hero support because otherwise you weren't getting that six up um, war. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Like Very good point. Have, yep. You had to have your units with it wholly within 12 inches yep, yep. of a hero. So you, I mean, I think my list had minimum four or five heroes because yep. like I needed the units and different parts of the board. And, you know, that six up ward save was so critical for their survival. Um, once you lost a hero, like your that unit that it was supporting is gonna be dust, really quickly. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah, I think I think that previous night hunt players are gonna fall into the trap where they think that they're gonna need four or five or six heroes to support their units, and the crazy thing is, is that they will. Right. Those heroes will support those units. Yeah. But that just means that you're getting less units on the table. Yes. You know, yeah. So your your, off, your so. lists will end up being you know ninety to one hundred and ten wounds instead of you know over yep. over that. And when you're you're totally right with the the ethereal support there. The just flat out having a six up ward without needing a hero nearby is so big. Um, just yeah. with the flexibility of the the army and being able to go and do different stuff. Um, and you know they're just generally speaking they're. Uh, battle traits got way better anyway but yeah that one is super big for i think from a so list good. composition yeah. standpoint you know um oh, yeah. i've always been a boys before uh before heroes kind of guy so i, I you know yeah. I'll, I'll take more bodies um over heroes generally uh but you know there's not one what, way to play it yeah what what would you say is a good wound count for this army that you that you might want to target so That's I think you're doing yourself question. a. I don't know if I've asked no. that. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's it's a little deceptive depending on on depending on what you do, right? If you've got no real uh -huh. built-in heal anywhere in the the list, so I'm really yeah. looking at um, <clears throat> uh, Guardian of Souls, I guess, and more importantly, and maybe I'll talk a little bit about this soon is uh, is the Spirit Torment. If you don't have either one yeah. of those, then you're gonna want maybe like. 120 or so i think that's going to be a really good number for you okay um if you've if okay. you've got some built-in heals you can get away with with much much less um that nagash yeah. list and the nagash lists i've been building have only ended up around 70 70 to 80 and that right. seems so right. low <clears throat> because really on paper it, it is really low. and that's one of the things i would tell the guys at slambo everybody i played you know they they look at my list and be like wow 78 wounds they'd be like yes but i promise it's going to feel more than that and I think my first two games, well, I, yeah. I ended the game with all of my models on the table because you just get them all back. Um, yeah. And I, this is and this is going to be um, similar with with this if you take some of the healing heroes um, that you'll just get a lot of them back. So you you'd be okay with with quite a few less, like even even down to the 80 range, you'll be you'll be I think fine um, with the new yeah. Um, yeah with the new command ability to allow them a five up ward kind of on demand it's going to be super good and that i think that's going to be okay for you yeah uh yeah absolutely um just i want to touch on the allegiance abilities a little bit i, I don't want to go through all of them um like the real winners for me are the ethereal part of yep. it right yep. where no every, like we said everything has a six up and um you can retreat and still charge on the same turn which is bonkers i mean so that was good that was <laughs> it's so good that was that was um the blade guys revenants like yes. special war scroll abilities right and that and like they were really good in 2.0 but now you get that to the whole army and goodness gracious you pair that with the wave of terror stacker yeah um, you know that you have and all of a sudden, like that's some that's some really good, uh, really good stuff. One thing, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people have keyed in on this is that um, because you can stack the wave of terror, right? Multiple units charging into um, a single unit, um, 
you know, you may be able to stack the subtract one from save rolls. Like you may be able to give them a negative two or negative three to a save roll, um, mm-hmm. depending on how well you roll your charges and how many units mm-hmm. you get into it. Right. Obviously. Um, which, so then that doesn't matter if they have a lot of rend, which a lot of this army does not have a lot of rend. If yeah. Super all. low. Yeah. Super you low know? generally. So, so, so that's one of the combos that I think people have to recognize is that you want to be charging a lot so that you can up your rend value, um, through the negative modifiers mm-hmm. to the save. Right. Um, I think Nighthawk players are pretty say... used to, um, to, to just doing the, you know, I'm, I'm 10 inches away. Let me just try to see if I roll a 10, you know, cause you, you used right, to be able to just exactly. fight off it. So yeah. definitely keep doing that with this army. It's going to pay so many dividends to just, you know, you've got a hero yeah. standing by charge them in, see what happens. You know, maybe, maybe you will yeah. roll another <clears throat> um, eight and and you're at, you know, all of your blade guys are flat minus two Ren now. And, or right. um, you, you roll, <clears throat> you roll that 10 and they, they're fighting last now, so <clears throat> yeah. You're, you, I think most night round players are going to be familiar with that, and you're gonna, you just want to keep doing that. You know, you're just gonna stack those debuffs. Yeah. Just this army's so good at that. Uh, would you say that the entire army needs to like, like, so there's the three wave of terror things, right? Shriek mm-hmm. is subtract one from hit rolls um, uh, made by that unit in the following phase, right? So they have a negative one to hit. Um, and then there's the subtract one from save rolls, and then the 10 plus is the strike last effect, which is, yep. which is amazing, right? But, um, um, would you say that, um, you're really looking for a lot of the save rolls? Like, would you use that more often than not? Um, I think if, there's... You can, you can go down, right? You can, yeah, like, you I can go the down. Yeah. I could I could use the stun at you know that's between n eight and nine or you know the, or the shriek so um, the reason the reason I say would you use that more is because the army doesn't have a lot of built in rend and with the save wars kind of save stacking wars that happen um, you kind of need a lot of rend um, in the in the game that it is now right yeah I think I think the eight to nine is the best of the three. Um, it, yeah. which is crazy to right. think about when you have one of them that um, strike last. The strike last yeah. is going to be great. It's very situational, I think. It's more of a, it's not necessarily one you just pick because you rolled a 10. I would almost yeah. always go down to um, stun for the minus one additional save because you're right, there's not a lot of rend. Uh, there's, there, the, yeah. Night Haunt's great at the number of attacks you get, but they're generally pretty poor. Right. Um, either hits wounds yeah, or like rend. Four and yeah, just not not great. Yep. So you, but what you can do is basically if you get enough if you get enough of that rend stacking in there, you basically yeah. turn all of your attacks into mortal wounds. And right. the army right. doesn't right. have tons of mortal wounds in it anymore. It's a little bizarre with them going from spirit hosts and hex race, which saw tons of play, um, having yeah. the mortals kind of all over the place to now they don't do that Not anymore sixes, and yeah, they just yeah. uh no. they just kind of do better wounding and i think that they've made a good choice in doing that because of this these abilities that allow you to just stack rend um it's going to feel a yeah. lot like beasts of chaos do where you have rend four on things and they're just going blending everything that you're touching and yeah i, I would yeah. i would say if you roll at 10 you're probably going to be picking the minus one minus one save for that reason yeah, I kind of felt the I kind of felt the same way, right? That's like one of the combos that you got to kind of look at um, with it. So, um, just just before we get into like some of the units and stuff, or the processions actually, are there like any are there any enhancements or artifacts of power that are like for you that are like auto includes? No. So there's really I think Pendant of the Fellowind in the last book was was an auto include. Um, just for three inch yeah. movement is so such a big thing in this objective game we're playing. Um, Pendant of the Fell Wind now is is the one I go to if if I don't yeah. need another caster. Otherwise, I'm just picking Arcane Tome every time. But I'll, I'll pick yeah. Pendant of the Fell Wind for the minus one to wound rolls. Um, you really it's 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 just giving. Is there any hero though? I mean, is there is there really any hero though that you really want to give that to? No, like, and so what you maybe really maybe the Knight of Shrouds on Ethereal Steed, I guess, maybe you know. Yeah, I, like... I I find myself sometimes throwing it on a Cruel Ghast, um, okay. just because the All Cruel right. Ghast has got the minus one damage thing, 
and if he's in combat, it's definitely going to affect whatever you're around. Um, when he's sitting outside of combat, right. sometimes you'll find that he's probably not going to do the minus one damage, which is pretty important. So if you put minus one to yeah. wound within three inches on him, and and you you're a good um, night hunt player, so you decide that you know he's ten inches away, but I'm going to try to charge him anyway to see if I can get an extra yeah. minus one save. Um, throw him in there. Um, but yeah, you're you're right. Generally speaking, there's not really one that you really want in combat as it is. So I mean, that's actually, what I mean. Is you, you really know, Kurdos? Kurdos like, could run in Kurdos. If he, I'd yeah, because he's a beat stick. He, I mean, he's got a lot of. He attacks. has gotten yeah, he's gotten much better and as a so beat stick you, too. Yeah, I mean, he's got like his his scepter right has five attacks, three up, three up, negative three ran, three damage. Super good. So if you gave him. If you gave him pen and it felt win, all of a sudden he's threes and twos. Yeah, he, he it's a um, it's subtract one from wound rolls. Um, oh, oh, from, from yeah, 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 for yeah, enemy. From, from the and so he's a uh, he's a uh, unique, unfortunately, so he can't take yeah, a okay. artifact as oh, it that's, is. But oh, I don't know what I'm thinking. About <laughs> it's that. okay. Right. That's that's why we're here, buddy. No, I, so I blew that one. There's um there's really not much. I I don't I I'm I'm with you. I, there's really not yeah. a guy that you want in in the thick of things as it is. There are very good support heroes, but not very many beat sticks. So. Um, at least yeah. as a general, you know, general beat stick. So I'm not, I'm not taking yeah. that often. As I said, I'm taking generally going to be taking um, arcane tome, um, and yeah, just because there's two super good spells in this lore that that we want, and um, I find myself only taking the one guardian of souls. So I'd like to have that other, yeah. um, that other caster in there, but um, yeah, for relics, no, I don't, I don't see tons that that are super good. The Reaper of Sh Sorrows that gives the super super rend is really interesting yeah. on a Cairn Wraith, um, but yeah. it's off of the right. opponent's bravery, and you're not subtracting one from bravery anymore just for being night haunt. So it's probably yeah. not going to happen super often. And so you know that's a fun yeah. one, how many but I don't know how often yeah. you're going to have yeah. it. I mean, let's say like one of the big metas out there right now is Nurgle, right? And so yeah. like, that's a ten bravery. You know, yeah, it's um, ten. It's it's and, eight to ten, and and even at the eights, yeah. you know, you, you got a to roll a nine up is, is something something in the range of like twenty five percent chance or something like that. So yep. it's not yep. super good to, to try to do that along with a low model count yeah. army. The can rate's not going to do super well into that. One thing I've seen a lot of people try to take is a beacon, the beacon of Nagashazar, okay. that lets you okay. bring back one slain model to each summonable night haunt unit on the battlefield. Which is okay, I think. I, I okay. always shy away from once per okay battle. It's once per battle. I know, yeah. I know. That's exactly what I was going to say. I, I, I tend know, to not like super just, like those. You don't get those, much utility. You know? yeah. with, with Night Haunt, you're taking mostly MSU. Uh, just to yeah, try to stack right. that wave of terror. So I don't know how useful it's going to be. How, how often you're going to find yourself in a position where you've got you know, one or two guys slain from multiple units on the battlefield generally speaking in this game you you end up losing um a full unit at a time so uh, right, I, right. I don't know how super super common that one is going to be um that said i think well, i like, yeah. i think i did pick it in one of my lists that i just wrote so <laughs> just to try it out that's yeah funny. just to try uh, it out i was gonna say like i was gonna say like you know i mean it's not like round three and you're sitting around with like oh i've got three here four there two there right let me just bring back one and there's so many like that's just like you're either gonna lose a full unit or not, you know. Right. Um, yep. So. Yeah, that's uh, just one I've seen not, some people not, take that I'm not really interested in. Um, yeah, it's a little. It's yeah. it's okay. There there there's some fun flavor ones in there, um, but they're yeah. just not super competitive. I think I, I've tried out a couple of them just because they seem like fun and, and yeah. Night Haunt's no longer a book that. Um, if you try to take just a fun list that you'll just get stomped and won't have fun. So it's it's pretty cool in that regard. You can just take kind of whatever you want to try and have fun with it. But, so um, what, what's the command trait that you like? Command trait. And here, here's – all right. This is going to be – this is going to sound crazy. And I, as I just okay. said, I'm I don't like game. once per game battles or things. But yeah, I know the rule of the Spectra host is super yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Is, Once yeah. per game, on a four up, yeah, you can have half your mo your army or your models back. I'm taking that yeah. in um, not every case, but some of them. If I'm taking a unit of twenty blade geists or like ten hex race, I'm very tempted to take yep. that, um, just because. Right, right. If you get half that unit back, you're you're in such a good spot um, to be able to to really yeah, really influence absolutely. the game. Um, with with the other ones being there, they're not 
awesome. Um, there's some really interesting ones, I think. Uh, particularly the Cloaked and Chattel one, where you can't be picked as the target of a shooting or combat attack and by more than one unit per phase. That is an interesting one to me. Only, I don't take that automatically, because as the game is right now, it's not super MSU-y. It's very like, I have a Gargan, and he's going to stomp, like, attack you. Or I have Marathi, yeah. and she's going to attack you. Marathi's going to kill whatever she attacks. So it doesn't matter if right, she, right. he can only be co- targeted one time. <laughs> you're going to lose him anyway, right? So, you know, yeah. that one I'm not yeah. super interested in. Um, and there's, and there's, so, like, there's also, yeah, I mean, like, the hero that you put this on, are five six seven wounds maybe at most I mean? seven yeah and you know at most yeah and, and normally they're around five wounds and so look even a unit of long strikes will probably kill it oh you know long strikes you know? will take off one of your uh heroes pretty much every turn um yeah exactly yeah so, like, you don't i agree more than yep. two units to do that you know what i mean so yeah don't give so, uh don't give yeah, the other guy a real that. good reason to go after your heroes more than they already are right <laughs> like that's kind of like why I don't try to stack a bunch of stuff on one hero because, yeah. you know, I, I don't – if I lose that hero, it's kind of like super impacts my game. But if I spread the love on on these command traits or artifacts, um, maybe maybe they'll think twice about attack which one they're going to attack. And that just – when you give your opponent options, uh, it just means that they can pick the wrong one and then, you know, it's, it ends up being good yeah. for you. So, yeah, so I'm just going to take yeah. Rule of the Spectral Hosts more often than not um, just on that off chance that yeah. I can get I that thing. If I can't take that one – um, I'm gonna take terrifying entity uh, to to make a unit yeah, terrified within say. six inches instead of three. It's not that would be much more helpful if you can influence them in the uh, shooting phase where they can't take their yeah. you know inspiring presence. But and there's not tons of shooting in this army, so it's not gonna be yeah. super useful. But you never know. Try it out. Um, yeah. That's that's kind of what I take. Yeah, definitely. All right, you said there's two spells that are amazing for us. Whatever. So you've got the first. They're, they're all good. Let me let me just start with that. The the spo- spell lore is yeah. actually great, other than Spirit Drain. Um, it used to be a little yeah. bit better than it is now, but they're all very good. Yeah. Um, so the fir- the two that you're gonna take though that I I try my best to get into every single list is Seal of Shaish, which is the new one, right? The five up ward. Yeah. And yeah. you can you think well, you know I've got the five up ward already with the, with my command ability yeah i mean i'd like to save command abilities for that reroll charge right so the way because the wave of terror is so yeah. important um and particularly as somebody that plays a lot on the gash that that spell is so good because um it gives you that five up ward um in the yeah. both there's you know till your next hero phase so you're gonna basically get their shooting yeah. phase your combat phase and their combat phase so three command points you're saving just with that one spell but Nagash's uh, command ability is plus one ward. So now you've got a four-up ward save in the yeah, combat yeah, phase. Okay. And on a unit of 30 Grimgas or a unit of nine Spirit Hosts, now you're really not going to lose that unit. So super, super yeah. good. I try to grab that and put that in every single list. Um, and you know command abilities can only be used once. So if they, they bait out that command ability on you and suddenly or stuck with a, a unit on a five up board that you didn't need and, and or something like that you know so it's just nice yeah. to have yeah. be able to have two on a five up board so that's that's the first one the second one it's i a, love casting value of five five so yeah, easy casting value of five yeah so it's, it's uh, that's a good one to get off um the second one i love is shade mist um for the minus uh-huh. one wound um, just just yeah. minus one to wound on whatever you do. And again, this might be influenced a bit because of the kind of the style I play um, of, of kind of having one of one tarpet unit and then a bunch of other units that do stuff. But even if you've just got a unit of 10 hex rates or a unit of 20 dread sides or whatever you're taking, this is super good. Yeah. Um, anything that you can do to reduce the amount of, of saves you have to make will obviously increase yep. the amount of, of models you save. Um, and plus one, plus one to hit is very easy to come by in this game. Plus one to wound is not. So your minus one to wound is more likely than not, not going to be canceled out by whatever they're taking. So you throw that minus one to wound on something, you are pretty safe in knowing that, that they're going to be, um, staying at minus one to wound. Um, so that's another one that I absolutely love. Yeah. You definitely feel feel that more. more. (laughs) 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Those Feel, are, yeah. Those are, those are great. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, and the, the rest of them are great. Are old, yep. But yeah. those are the two that I'm I'm trying to shoehorn into every list I can get. Yeah, for sure. Soul Cage I used a lot in 2.0. Soul Cage I used um, you know, quite a bit um, with Nagash. You know, Nagash gets all of these, yeah. so it makes it a little bit easier for yeah. you. But um, Soul Cage was, is, is very actually very useful. Um, it's similar yeah. to Seal of Shaish, where there's another way in the yep. book to just get it. Um, so with the Wave of Terror, obviously. So um, it just would you know free up and allow you to have one more minus one rend on a charge instead of having to use right. it for for right. strike last um so it's it, they're all viable you know they're all viable choices yep. um which is awesome but those are the two that i go for um just myself yeah for sure definitely all right so we've got four processions the green yep. legion the emerald host the scarlet doom and the quicksilver dead um what are the ones that um I, I'll, I'll start with the grieving legion um Oh no, sorry, the Emerald Host. I'm I think that this one might be a trap. Okay. The Emerald Host. Um, the reason why I think that is, you know, this allows you to pick D three plus one uh, enemies on the battlefield. Um, you know, and this is uh, before the first battle round begins, and at the end of each battle round, you get a roll of dice for each unit that you picked, um, and on a two up, they suffer D three mortal wounds. Right? If it's a monster, they get D three plus one mortal wounds. Um, so, yeah, look, D3 plus 1, there's a chance you get 2 units, there's a chance you get 4 units, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it does 3 mortal wounds at the end of each round. Or D3. D3 yeah, D wounds, if it was D3. 3, we'd have a very different yeah, conversation. If it was 3, right we'd be, yeah, exactly. So, I, I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, sure, it's nice to be able to point it like a support hero, like, uh, for example, that Blood Secrator that you had before, yep, right? And yep. just be like, mortal wounds, mortal wounds. And maybe maybe this is good in the Age of the Incarnate, but maybe not. Like, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm, I'm a little wary of using the faction ability to choose anywhere between two and four models and, you know, get get D3 mortal wounds on them. Um, I, yeah. I feel like there's better processions, in my opinion. So, I don't know. I just don't feel like it does that much. Yeah, I think um, I think the first thought it, it, it two parts to it. Obviously, if it was just a flat number, if it was even just two um, mortal right. wounds, um, and it wasn't a two up, you have to roll that dice and just the uh, it will happen. Times you get a one it up will it happen, happen. Yeah, where you roll that one when you yeah. need the two. So I can totally understand not not really seeing this one as useful. Um, I, you know. I, I do like it. I think I think if I'm not taking one of the other ones uh, that we'll talk about, um, I'm gonna take uh -huh. this one, and that's just because, um, just it's just free damage, man. It's just so hard to pass up it free is. damage. It is. I'm, I in my brain immediately goes when I see something like this to, um, there, well, there's a couple different places that goes, I guess, but one of the places is I'm actually not putting this on support heroes, and. I'm going to be attacking the sport heroes, generally. I mean, it, okay. I guess it all right. depends. All right. It all right. depends on how the rest of the game looks and everything, but deployment looks and stuff. But I'm probably yeah. not going to put it on sport heroes. I'm going to go after them anyway. So, I, I, you know, I can right. see why you don't want to do it because you're you're you might just do basically nothing for until like maybe it'll take you three or four rounds to actually get one, and by that point the game's kind of decided. Right. I think I might just go and put this on some of those annoying units. Um, that you just don't want to bother with. Like, you, you've got 10 Blood okay. Reavers sitting on the side camping an objective. You've got the guy, you know, the Beast right. of Chaos guy that sits his uh, unit of, of like six goats in the back, and that's what he sacrifices, and that's how he gets all his summoning points. Um, you're putting it on, Marathi's a great choice too, obviously, but you're putting it on that small unit of witches yeah. on the side that is, is just going to kind of be the pain that you're not going to want to go after. That's what I'm, I think yeah. I'm going to put this on. Um, I'm not going to do it on anything that I plan on actually attacking throughout the game because, uh, right. you know, once once you destroy the unit it's on, it's gone. So it's kind of incentivizing you to put it on something that you don't really see yourself really attacking. And then the free damage I get on those, yeah. great. Um, you know, and, yeah. and it just forces more bravery tests. And, you know, the army's That's pretty true. good about, yep. about that anyway. But if you find yourself... 
um, back to what we were talking about, I think before with um, the, the the one I was telling you about the other command trait I was telling you about with the terrifying entity where within six inches, this is pretty helpful yeah. for that because you, you don't need uh, to actually yeah, be in combat point. with them. And they, you know, the suddenly that unit of, uh, you know, whatever it is, I guess uh, we'll say um, I, tons, not finding tons of Skaven now, but say those Skaven or how about that unit of skinks that's on the side? Um, now they're taking, right. they're actually taking their bravery tests and man, I might not lose tons, but it's going to add up throughout the game. So that's, that's what I'm yeah. taking it on. I think I, I kind of do like this, that's this procession, um, not so much because of the stuff I'm going to go after, but because of the stuff I'm not going to go after. Yeah. 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 I think the, the, um, general consensus out there is like you throw this on support heroes, right? But yeah. Um, I think that's a good point that you made, which is like I'm going after those guys anyway with my, you know, my more elite units. So why would I waste this on on them, right? Go after the little chaff guys, you know. Or, yeah. Especially yeah. if you've got like five hex rays that you're going to send to an objective, right? Right. Why not whittle them down a little bit and then send the hex rays over there? Yeah, exactly. Right. Y so. Yeah, a unit of six, you know, which is is much easier to take out than a unit of ten. Um, you know, or, right. you know, anything like that, really. Um, but yeah, that's exactly yeah. exactly the thought. That's a, that's a good point. Um, the one I like the least is the Grieving Legion, which is enemy units cannot retreat while they are within three inches of a, any friendly Grieving Legion units with ten or more models. Yeah, that last uh, part of the sentence is the that thing that kills it. That last part ruined it. it. <laughs> if, it was, if it was any Grieving Legion, we're talking. Yeah. We are in business. We're having right. a conversation. With 10 or more models, you're going to have a lot of units of 10 or more models. But really what you want to be able to deny is is having your little hero kind of in combat with that chaff unit that you weren't going to attack with. Yeah. And so, so yeah. you know, I, I just – I'm not seeing this one. I, I love the utility of no retreat but not with a unit of 10, right. unfortunately. Well, especially since this army wants to be MSU so bad. Exactly, right? yes, so yes. You're going to take a unit of five hex rays. You're going to take a unit of um, of ten dread scythe heritons. You're going to take, I mean, maybe you'll take a unit of 20 chain rasps. Maybe you'll take a unit of 20 blade guys, depending. But if you're taking a unit of 20 blade guys, this is not the procession for you. Exactly, right, you know exactly. I mean? we'll Both about. of those, dread scythes and um dread sites and blade guys this is not what you're taking yeah so it's, I, it's not, just struggling so it's, to see this one being I guess it's useful chain rass, right like if you've got like 30 chain rafts that you throw into something then it can't yeah away. i think that's, that's i think great, that's the that, idea right yeah yeah but okay i mean cool like that's two units essentially you know that are going to tie something up Right. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and Chain Rasp yeah. really, like, I guess the only thing you're doing is move blocking with them. Um, and with their five up save, right. it's not super tanky, you know? It's not the most tanky thing right. that's ever existed. So they're probably just going to get through whatever you put into them. And unfortunately, yeah, like we were saying, if you, if you got, if I could throw you, you know, six spirit hosts and that counts, you know, we'd have a conversation or like you have five hex rates. Right. <clears throat> I can touch five hex rates into you yeah. and now you can't retreat. Super useful. But uh, yeah, unit yeah. of ten is just not. It's just don't see it in the cards. No, no, no. So let's talk about Scarlet Doom. Yeah. Um, this is uh, this is uh, one that you love, which is I think it's hilarious that the book has a picture of the blood side <laughs> yes. heritage. Yeah, the dread the side, right? <laughs> Why is that? Why is that the like, <laughs> Scarlet <what>? Doom one? <laughs> this doesn't even make any sense because it's. I, I was like, oh, cool. Like they're gonna use the blood, uh, the dread side heritage right here, and. No, no. Um, it's yeah. after a friendly Scarlet Doom Blade Geist Revenant. Yeah, charge yeah. Move, you can pick one enemy <laughs> unit within one inch of that, right? If you do so, roll a number of dice equal to the number of models from the charge yep. unit. That's so crucial, right there. For each five plus, the target suffers one mortal wound, right? So, um, yeah. I like the models there uh, because it used to be like with the um, some of the charges you would get it um, for like hex rays. I think did a mortal wound on a charge, right? Uh, no, they didn't. So they, they no, didn't. they didn't. Um, what did mortals uh, on the char? Was there anything that just did a ma a mortal uh, on the charge the, in this book? Uh, the black coach did at one point. Yeah, you're right. I think he did do D three when he charged. He still uh, does, yeah. but you know, I think that was just yeah. about it. 
But I if think... you look at the, like um, the piggies, right? The the um, mm -hmm. Gore Grunt is like you have to. It's like it specifically says each model that is able to get in. You are able. To yes. Do, uh, yeah. The huge difference the between these two so. things. Um, I think like yeah. you know corn. Um, what are they? Uh, the the skull crushers or blood crushers, both uh -huh. of them. Yeah, the rule says it's the same kind of rule, right? You charge and you do mortal wounds, except it's every model from the charging unit that is in within one inch of the enemy unit. So this is so much different. And I've played uh, I've played Scarlet Doom quite a few times now, just because it yep. seemed to be the first one to jump out. And it's this is so good. Um, you're charging okay. things anyway, right? So. Yeah. You know, I've been taking you're like retreating and charging, retreating, you're retreating and charging, so, like, retreating, you charging. Over and over. You stack in those mortal wounds, and I'm I've, I've tried it a couple of times. I've taken sixty blade geists in three different units to okay. do this, and what you can do with it is you you charge your first unit in, right, and yeah. you just touch one model within one inch, and <laughs> right, you do all your mortal wounds. And then you charge your yeah. next unit, and you touch one model in to do all your mortal yeah. wounds. And then your last unit, the one that you actually want to be in combat with, you charge them yeah. in, and then that's what you use to kind of do the whole surround and get all your models that right, you can to right. fight. But by that point, you've done 60 dice on, on five, so 20 free mortal wounds. And I have Ooh. killed a Kragnos in in the charge phase just, really? with, with, just with wow. this. It is so good. Um this is such a strong, strong ability. And when you look at something yeah. like, yeah, you look at something like the Emerald Host, we're like, oh, maybe I'll do two mortals. It's like, <laughs> okay, right. well, exactly. with this one, I'm exactly. going to do 20. <laughs> and I'm going to do that yeah. every um, turn. Each, yeah, every, you know, every round, right, I get to do that. Yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah, um, so this one's super useful. The other thing that I, um, I think the most useful thing I've done with this one, too, is uh, I've played against a Nurgle guy. And, uh, you yes. know, they've got this ability. The, the Sloppity Biopiper has an ability that means that you cannot pile in um, if you're attacking a unit right. within 14 inches of them, right? Well, with this, you charge in. You kind of cover a whole, a whole unit that you want to charge, and then you touch one of the Blade Geists to the Sloppity Biopiper or whatever, you know, support hero is sitting behind. Oh, and you yeah. nuke that guy off. And then you just straight up attack right. the unit that you charged. And it's such a powerful combination Ooh. to be able to take off um, to be able to take off a hero without actually having to attack the hero is just so strong. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Uh, the one that I've been eyeing is the Quicksilver Dead, right? So this mm -hmm. is ward rolls cannot be uh, made for wounds caused by attacks made with melee weapons by friendly Quicksilver Dead, Quicksilver Dead Dread Scythe Herodin units. So, um, you know, this obviously favors the Dread Scythe Herodins, which I think they need a little bit extra love. Um, they didn't have a ton of love in the in the 2.0 book. Yeah. Um, they were they were they were they were okay. good. Like yeah. they were okay. Um, I think they could have been pointed a, a quite a bit less because they didn't yeah. have much, you know. But um, their 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 gimmick was based off of bravery, right? Like mm -hmm. if they had uh, a certain if they had uh, the opponent had a bravery less than six, then they got like a plus one to their wound roll or something like that. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, it just wasn't great. But, yeah, um, what game are you playing that, that you're running into much of that, right? I know, right? Because exactly. it's not AOS. Um, yeah. It's not AOS. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I like this one uh, mostly because the meta has uh, a bunch of ward rolls out there. It there's sure the does. There's the Grave Lords. There's the there's Nurgle now. Nurgle's and huge, And you better believe yeah. there's going to be Night Hunt out there. You know, yep. Uh, more yep. Meta. The uh, it also is super great into Daughters of Cain, which also just got a book. Yes. Um, yep. Yeah, there's just word rolls are becoming more and more prevalent. And I would agree with you. This one is awesome. Um, yeah. You are you are sacrificing. Really, it's really the choice is between uh, right. This one in the Scarlet Doom. And, and I think most people would yes. say, well, I'll just go Scarlet Doom because three is to hit three is to wound. Um, and I've already got the Ren with the Blade Geists. And everybody's, you know, that's the one. Well, don't right. sleep on this one. Um, particularly with the meta the way it is. But remember we were just talking about being able to stack Rend. Uh, so, yeah, they're Ren dash, but not for long. Not until you start charging some stuff. Um, right. And exactly. and you can get... Uh, you can get... 
add one to hit and wound roll super easily with this with this guy, with these guys. Um, if you just take like uh, an arcane well, bolt, yeah. Look, when you charge with them, you add one to hit and wound rolls. No, no. Uh, so it's wait, if, if 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 they are within um, six inches of any models that have any wounds allocated to them. So oh, or yeah, models, but that's but that's, a, but that's, yeah. that's fine yeah. because there's ways to do that. Cruel gas yeah. can shoot them. You can you can pile yeah, it, or you can yeah. you can do a, a quick wound first with a unit of hex wraiths because they do mortals when they charge. Um, they're yeah. they're super they're super easy ways to get around this. So you're up to your threes threes with the same exact same as your blade geists. You've got an extra attack over the blade geists, and uh, yeah, um, extra attacks. Yeah, well, the the blade guys are probably charging, right? So it's they're gonna have three. But oh, either way, to, yeah, you're yeah, yeah. Attack, so, yeah, but yeah. you're still gonna get plus one. So, a, a unit of ten of these these girls are doing forty one attacks, which is so good. Yeah. Um, you know, add it in with the the um the survivability buff that they have about minus one to wound when you attack them if they made a charge roll or charge this yeah. this turn. Yeah. They are very very good units, and I think a lot of people are gonna sleep on them for a long time. Uh, you're going to see tons of Scarlet Doom just because that's the, the flashy one that does the mortal wounds. But this one's going to be so, flashy, yeah. so good. Um, so good. Yeah, I'm, uh, I saw that and I said, that's the one I want to play, right? Um, yeah. It had nothing yeah. to do with the fact that you stole all the Blade Guys. Right? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, so, it, yeah, maybe maybe I'm just trying to convince you that, uh, you know, I didn't do you a disservice. No, I I, I genuinely <laughs> think that this is going to be a great um sub faction that tons of people are going to get a yeah. lot of play with i'm a, i'm excited for it i think yeah um, i think it's going to be it's going to be good it's going to take a little bit of getting used to and with the new book mm -hmm. um but you know i think running um msus for this right because they come in units of 10 they and do and so i don't think you want to do unit of 20 um, you don't really need it yeah it's going to be it's going to be hard to get them in combat, mm -hmm. uh, 20, you know, 20 uh, models in combat because they're on 32 mil bases. So, um, and you want to maximize those charges. Exactly. Right? You want to, you want to maximize that. So, yeah. So I think running like four or five units of 10 is, uh, is pretty awesome. It's going to be, yeah, it's good. That's going to be really, really good. Yeah. So let's talk some units um, now that we've kind of like gotten into some of the possessions. Um, you run Nagash. How do you like Nagash's new War Scroll? So Nagash has got that new War Scroll, right? It came out and everybody kind of was down on him. Um, and I'll be honest, I was too at first. I, I saw the change. Okay. I think the change that everybody was looking at was change to his sword being a four up to wound. Which is just insanity uh -huh. when you look at it on the model and you say that is a four up to right. yeah whatever, but um, <laughs> you know Nighthawk had the ability to it was a spell called Reaping Scythe and that was one that everybody overlooked at the time because there was nobody to put it on, um, and that one was uh, pick a weapon you get reroll hits and wounds awesome 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 for Nagash, uh, particularly yeah. with that sword, um, but it's changed now obviously you don't get reaping scythe so you're you're just on kind of his base profile uh there's ways to get plus one to wound in the game so it's not super big yeah. deal but you know it's it's a huge it's a yeah, huge change spell, right? but he's got four attacks with the staff that are run 3d6 it used to be one attack and that is yeah that is massive massive um yeah so that alone is enough to make him truly it just a beat stick of a character um I absolutely love this model. I love this War Scroll. I love everything about it. He has single-handedly won me many a game. Um, right. And there's some weird stuff with him. No Ward is very bizarre, considering he's the you know supposed to be the god of death. And and remember yeah. back to I mean, we we literally have called a Ward. He has the mortal. Yeah, yeah. He has the mortal, but no, yeah. you know, straight up ward save, and he's only got that three up yeah, save yeah, yeah, with yeah, sixteen yeah. wins. Not tons for a nine hundred fifty point five point model, and that's fair to be honest. That is a fair criticism of him. Um, it's a little strange yeah. with, you know, a, a ward save used to just be called a death save, and there was a reason for that because yeah. it started out as a death right. thing, and the god of death now does not have one. Um, <laughs> but all things considered, I've run him at a couple GTs with some really killer lists. And he hasn't died uh, more than, I think, maybe twice. So he's survivable. Um, he's more survivable, I think, than he, he gets credit for. Uh, and I, I love this uh, I love this uh, War Scroll. And the, the biggest reason, 
And like the number one reason why I love this Force Girl is because of that one rule that he's got um, that is Supreme Lord of the Undead, where he can add one to the number of models that are returned. Um, yeah. Every every time you return anything to uh, a death unit, you get one more. If you rally him, right. one more. Spirit Torment, one more. Every time he brings them back, one more. Uh, the you know the Guardian of Souls, you get another one. Um, the Lady of Linder, yeah. you get another one. The uh, battle, the uh, what is it? The the uh, yes, the artifact to bring back models, you get another one. There's just so many yep. times that you're going to be bringing back models um, that you can build a list around it, um, and you can and yes. you can make yes, it. Yeah. And because it, it's obviously reliable. It's right. very, it's, reliable, it's the most reliable thing you can really get, right? You have to kill Nagash yeah. to get it off the table. It's so good. Yeah, it's right. it's awesome. Um, I super love his War Scroll. I think people should try him out a little bit more. Give him a go. Um, be a little careful with him. But when you get, when you decide, keep him behind whatever screen that you're screening with. But when you decide to, to unleash him out, he will absolutely blend whatever he touches. Um, and don't be afraid to not cast, you know, seven or eight Arcane Bolts. Start off with your yeah. Mystic Shield. Get yourself your two-up save. Um, play around with some of the other uh, some of the other spells that he's got in there, and then um, and then throw maybe like three arcane bolts at the end, just as like a, add a little insurance and go and go have fun with them. I think everybody should yeah. try him out a little bit more. Don't write him off. Um, is he is he in your main list right now? Still? He is in the list that I am going to be running at a small little RTT the next time I play. We'll see how this one goes before I really start to to change up things. But um, uh, I you know I love the model and I've painted him I think pretty well. So I I just like to play with him. So yes, he is currently going to be on my uh, the next list that I play that I made. I mean, 955 points is no. Like nothing to sneeze at. Like that he's is a lot of points. he's 955, but you're really taking spell porter every single time with him. So he's actually about a thousand twenty-five. Yeah. Okay. I mean that makes sense, right? The spell right. Portal. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. So thousand twenty-five. Um, now he he refunds that cost a little bit when you can keep returning extra models. Right. Yeah, when you make a unit, a, a, so, one of your one of your units basically unkillable in your army, yeah, you're gonna find that he's worth his hundred or thousand twenty five points. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, we talked about Lady Olinder. She got a massive upgrade. She's way push. different. Yeah. Um, do you think she's better? I do think she's better. She was two hundred and ten points. Um, so, yeah. so cheap, right? Like that, that is almost nothing. Yeah. She's 340 now. And you think like 340, I'm like, God, that's so much. Yeah. It is a lot so she, for a night hunt, right? I think at 210. Yeah. I think at 210, she was still over costed. Okay. In um, 2.0. I, I just don't think that she really, like, she had a whole bunch of like once per game stuff. She could do, um, like, like I said, you had to get her in the middle of something for her to actually like really put out stuff her spells were all 12 inches right yeah that um, um her uh lift the veil thing was six inches um yep you know she had a once per battle thing that she could do something within 12 inches or something like that she had shooting attack that was eight inches so she really needed to be within six to eight inches or some of of the combat really to to do stuff right there was one point in 2.0 that um, I was playing Matt Barker. This is the very first tournament I ever played. Matt Barker was the first person I ever played. Oh, lucky person. you. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I mean, he's a great opponent. Oh, no, he's, he's great, like, right? Yeah, but the, he's not. Yeah, he, he also knows his business. He's yeah. very he's good. He's a great player. Yeah, like I, I did. Like, I played I played Matt my first turn and Sergio my second one. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, that's a pretty good, pretty good hey, matchup. Yeah, welcome to the game. Um, yeah. So, so Matt dropped ten blight kings um, to try to flank my chain rasps, and like bring him in on an objective. Right. This is the old. Um, oh gosh, what was it? Uh, uh, what was the glory one for glory? Is the one that had the six. Uh, it wasn't scorched earth, but it had the six um, tokens. Oh yes. Um, you know. Yeah, I, I knew what you're talking about. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, anyway, though. I had, Dang. I, I yeah. had a whole bunch of chain rasps, yeah. I had a whole bunch of chain rasps on one of the corner objectives, right? And Lady Olinda was near them. Those uh, Blight Kings 
came in and they could not budge those chain rests because they didn't have, I mean, they had a bunch of attacks, but like they just weren't, they couldn't budge the chain rest. And the Guardian of Soul kept bringing dudes back too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Lady Olinder was behind just like flashing herself, you know, with that <laughs> tail and just like, you know, doing D6 damage. I was killing like, you know, two to three, um, between the Chain Rasp attack and Lady Olinda, I was killing two to three um, of these Blight Kings every turn. And he's like, how are my Blight Kings not getting through this? This doesn't make any sense. I only had 20 Chain Rasps that right. were like yeah. screaming Lady Olinda, right? And it, she was just doing work. And I mean, she was good, but again, you had to get her in there and she only had seven wounds. Once those Chain Rasps went away and the Blight Kings got onto Lady Olinda, she was toast. Yeah. Toast. Yeah. Because of their exploding hits, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, I I read Lady Olinder's War Scroll, you know, and I said to myself, she finally feels like a Mortark of Death, because she did not feel like that before. Yeah, for sure. Me. Yep. You know. Yeah, she um, she so, I, you know, I think she's actually lost a little bit of the mortal wound output, but it's yeah, it's because of that once per game thing she that she used to be able to do. Now it's just the the lifting the veil is the uh, twelve inches. Um, she's going to heal basically yep. every wound when she does it. So if she's got any on her somehow, she's going to heal them all. Um, just from yep. that, she's her spell is 18 inches. Um, and it very good. Minus one to hit and plus one yep. to hit for you. Yep, very good. Uh, basically gives yep. you free all out attack on all of your units that attack, whatever it is. Um, and, you know, playing art MSU, that's what you kind of need. You need that command point economy. Um, she's got the, her four up ward. Um, she, I think in the, yeah, the, one of the things that. Her. Everybody sees that they take her for is that um, no rest for the wicked, where the, she brings back D6 models to a, every symbol unit on the battlefield um, once per once battle, per battle. Which is good. Once it is battle. good. It is yeah. good. Uh, with your MSU, you know, maybe you find yourself in a position where, you know, all of your your units all over the place have like a couple guys left, and this is just gonna like do yeah. wonders for you to bring that because it's p models, not just wounds, p models. So yeah. spirit hosts, hex yeah. rates are all gonna come back. Um, I think that's but pretty good. I, I mean, that it, one's useful. It's yeah, okay. I, it's not it is. not yeah. amazing, but it's okay. Um, but I think one of the things that everybody's gonna sleep on for a while with her is the um, the more Tucker grief one, where uh -huh. every time they use a command point on a five up within 12 inches of her on a five up they just they just flat out lose it and um right and they, they they don't get the command point they don't get to use it and that's it um huge i mean i love that i love that um yeah. because no i defense, i no think attack. yeah 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 no, no uh no all defense right? is going to be huge yeah just reroll charge within 12 inches of her right so they're going to be within 12 inches if they want to charge um, there's just a ton of utility with that one and it's not a five up, so it's not the best thing in the world, but that is, that's just going to come in. It's a third of the time, right? It's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Um, and so, she's so, just, yeah. Oh, sorry. I was going to say that, um, this is very similar to what Kurdos had before, right? Where yes. Would very steal similar. The command point on a five up. And the problem with Kurdos in 2.0 is that you only had five chances total to mm -hmm. actually use it. You know right. what I mean? Yep. However, with this one, within 12 inches, right, you have potentially hero phase, shooting phase, charge phase, combat phase, you know, like all of these phases. All of them. Within a turn that, that um, and, and, that's, yeah. and that's like, you know, not just your turn, but their turn as well, that she could use this. So you're, you're rolling that dice, and she's anywhere near where they're going to be issuing, you know, command. Um, she's rolling that dice quite often. And which increases the utility of that ability. Yep. You know, yeah. And it's more than just five times per game. One of the biggest problems with her, and like kind of with your, your Blake King story, was that, you know, she's only seven wounds. So she's going to, she's just, you're just yeah. going to lose her so much. With that four up ward now, um, she's going to be sitting at what is essentially 14 wounds. Um, awesome. Yeah. And then I think every time I'm taking her, I think I'm gonna just going to take a unit of, of three spirit hosts just for that utility. Um, so, you know, Emerald Host yeah. used to be able to do that with hex rates, but now now your hex rates are freed up and they can actually go do stuff for you instead of bodyguarding. Um, but your spirit right, hosts right. that you're going to have around your heroes anyway are now going to body, bodyguard for them. So I think I'm taking them every time just to make sure that that battery of that, that D6 mortal battery just keeps going off every turn. 
Um, and I think she yeah, will get her sure. points back more often than not. In a pinch, she can do okay in combat. She's not great, but everything like with everything in this book, you have to take into context the um, the ability to stack some rend. So yeah, minus two rend. Well, maybe it's minus five. You never know. You know that that kind of thing. Right. So yeah, I do right. like her. I do like her a lot. Um. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um. I'm just gonna roll through some of these real quick. Sure. Herdos, is he a take? Or is he no. a narrative player? Yeah, no, you're not taking narrative. Him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where I've taken him in doubles in two point and had a blast with him. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, um, he seems like super fun narrative you know, kind of guy, yeah. Yeah. And and um in a thousand point like kind of list, he's actually pretty good. I would you know I would I mean? agree because, with you, yeah. You know, because you're you're not usually going against like bigger bigger monsters that you know or something that you need um, that you need like more magic or whatever. Like in a thousand point list, he's he's pretty good. He's mm -hmm. fun to play with. You know, yeah. So that's where I would use him. If you're going to do a doubles tournament with Night Hunt, you have somebody that's like going to go heavy shooting or heavy magic. Um, bring Kurdos. Have a, have yeah. a good time with him. Like, Super good. Uh, he is the the best beat stick in the army for sure. But I, I don't think you just yeah. I just don't think you flat out need one in this army. Um, just would, from from other him, some other yeah. some other things. Yeah. I would not put him in my two thousand point army no. tournament. No, no, um, no. All Rock the Drowner gives us the ability that yeah. Um, the combo it was the combo of the uh, Dreadblade Harrow ability to teleport, and then the um. The uh, it wasn't ruler spectral of the summons. Host, it was the spectral summons. Yeah, that was that allowed you to pull that unit to you. So he has it built into his war scroll. Yep. To do that. Yep. Do pretty like good. This, I, do you like this I, guy? I I actually don't really like him too much. I've been trying to build some lists where I can yeah. use him. I think the thing that you're going to be doing the most with him is using that ability to pull out a, a unit that's either mostly dead or or you know in no longer in a position where they're kind of have the upper hand. Um, to, to maybe heal them up before you you send them back in, but I'm just trying to imagine yeah. a situation where I'm really going to be in that position. I'm not sure if spending 175 points on a model to do that will be better than just having another 10, you know, yeah, of whatever yeah, I'm trying to save. Yeah, I, I just I just don't I just don't know if I see it for him, which is sad because he's such a cool model. He's another one of those maybe in a um, more uh, relaxed kind of environment. I would take him. Um, but I, I don't yeah. know if I'm de – and the other part of it is if he got D3 extra attacks um, just whenever he charged would also be interesting. Yeah. But he has to slay um, a model to do it, right? So right. if you're going to charge into like a hero or something like that, you're not going to slay him. So you're not going to get your D3 attacks. And um, right. I don't know. I, I, I just don't see it. He's not a super great beat stick and that ability while cool. Um, I don't, I just, I just don't know if I love it that much. Um, yeah, yeah maybe, maybe some capture some, some objectives on the side, but guess what? Your night hunt, you can, uh, just deploy in the underworld anyway and, and yeah. do that for free. So yeah, I'm not super loving yeah, them. And I, I bought the model just cause I love the model and yeah. you know, maybe I'll play a doubles and throw them in there and that'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rykonor, poor Rykonor. Poor Rykonor. Like, Such a I cool just, model. Uh, you, such, such a, a cool, cool model. model and he was he was like so good in 2.0 but um I interestingly he's gotten good. better at combat i think i, I think yeah. the biggest thing that hurts him the, like more than anything um is losing the mortals uh, i love the yeah. mortals on six's thing but i have played him once um for 190 points you would hope that you have more than uh one cast but you yeah, know right. such is life um and I've got I got him up to minus five rend because of the number of charges I had, um, and all so right. with five attacks and doing two damage each, you're basically doing like ten mortal wounds, right? If you can get them all through, right, right, which is awesome right. on paper, but yeah, he just suffers from I being mean, it's only situational. yeah, exactly seven wounds, situational ability. His corpse candle ability is is, is pretty cool, uh, but it, the biggest the biggest change to this force scroll other than the attacks, like even past that point, right? The biggest change was to his corpse candle. Um, you used to be able to pick yeah. the model that you uh, did the mortal wound to. Now you pick the unit. Right. Um, so I don't love that. Um, yeah. You used to be able to pull out a yeah. coherency and um, now you can't. So. 
Well, and what what was awesome too is I would love, love, love to pick that um, Mortis Guard leader. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know yeah, the the like, the that guy, the champion, the banner, the whatever it is, right yeah. out of the unit. Now the, it's the, just the, the what, yeah. yeah, just the unit. It's much much worse, yeah. and that's pretty much the biggest reason why I'm not taking him. I think more than any yeah, other reason. I mean, it's kind of kind of sad, and I I mean I think he's overpointed right now. Yeah, one ninety is oof. So yeah. Yep. So. Uh, the scriptor mortis. This to me is a narrative. <laughs> this guy. guy never take this guy. If you're taking this guy, he's, then you are just having good. fun, aren't you? <laughs> yes. You so, are. You are. You are ready for those bottom tables where you're drinking beer. I think so. everybody knows that too. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not seeing tons of lists talking about the scriptor mortis. So. Oh man, I I don't. Yeah. What a what a whiff. What a whiff yeah. on that on that war scroll. Yeah. You know the, yep. the whole judgment mechanic thing is like okay. It's I, a good idea. It's not okay. Yep. It's it's, it's a good, good idea. idea. That's yeah. what I meant. Like you're like, okay, that's pretty. That's pretty uh, cool, uh, fluff wise. But, right. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. It turned the the execution is a little uh, yeah. lackluster. I think. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, the Knight of Shrouds on Ethereal Steed. How do you like him? Yeah, I'm not taking either Knight of Shrouds. Um, and I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna say the re the biggest reason is um their uh, their stolen hours ability is just not really going to happen too often, and right. the, um, the 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 once per game, once per battle round, um, redeploy, unleash hell, all that attack thing. Yeah, I'm just not I'm just not seeing the use for that. Um, Night Hunter interesting in that you don't have to say spend a single CP on uh, all out defense, so you generally have right. a, quite a few of them. Um, so I'm not taking a 155 point hero for a for a once per battle round kind of free CP. Right. That that seems kind of a waste to me. That um, if they were maybe three damage, maybe if they were flat three ren, maybe if they had a bit more wounds. So some of those more offensive command traits and artifacts were useful. I would I would consider it. But even the one on Ethereal yeah. Steed is six wounds. I mean you're just there's right. just no value. Yeah, um, cruel gasp cruciator. I like him a lot. Love this guy. Um, yeah, yeah. He's uh, first off an awesome model. Right? Yep. Yep. Um, but um, I I loved I loved his rules in 2.0 that gave the five up ward save if yep. he did damage right yep. to a nearby unit. But um, his his thing right now is pretty good, right? Which is um, instead of the ward save, it subtract one for damage inflicted, which can actually add up quite a bit. It is like so big. Like yeah. Orcs. Yeah. yeah. Um, the unit has to be terrified. Uh, so it's get, it gets a little weird with like the kind of the triangle you're trying to build between this guy, the unit wow. attacking and the unit being attacked. Right. Um, and it's a little restrictive where the night haunt unit has to be holy within 12. So there is some, you know, balance to it, but I, I the minus one damage with the number of models in this game that do two damage it, where you're just having all damage. Oh, so good. Yeah. Um, Seraphon yeah. Thunder Lizards just have minus one damage flat, and that's the biggest thing about right. them, right? And you just yep. neuter so many armies. So, you know, your Fire Slayers are doing one damage with their Hearth Guards. Um, suddenly they're not so scary, right? Um, even uh, <clears throat> uh, Mind Razor, right? Mind Razor Snakes are doing one damage. You know, yep. Marathi's doing two damage with her. Sp it's just like so many things, just doing almost nothing. The, <clears throat> the yeah. survivability of the army just increases. Um, so large. I think the only uh, the best success I've had with this guy is um, bringing him down from the sky with uh, one of the other units, maybe in reserve. That makes um, sense. Yep. That's the best I've had with him. It is a little diff difficult to do to get the uh, 12 inch bubbles and stuff working correctly. Um, he's a great charge yeah. defense too. So if you want to stick him in, in your front and maybe not start him in the sky, stick him in your front and just dare your opponent to to charge in. Um, it, he can have some yeah. like a pretty big effect on the game in that way. Um, so I do like him. Yeah. He's not my first yeah. hero I pick, but he's very good. Yeah. So would you say he's like your two or second or third one? Is he is generally, seven? yeah, he's generally finds himself in the second or third. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I agree. I I like him tucking him in with like a dreadblade or dread scythe Herodin yep. unit, you know, and go hunting. <laughs> kind of yeah. thing with uh with those dread scythe heritons you know um he could even support two if you are good about where you position 
Right. Yeah. Um, totally. Paradins, you know, if you if you can get them in there, and I think any any night hunt player that was is really used to 2.0 is used to figuring out like those 12 the 12 inch bubbles. bubbles yeah. You know, it really really rewards a um, player a player who's good about that kind of thing, right? Somebody who's who's yeah. a very good player will have a lot of success with this guy. I think you're going to run into some problems if you're maybe new or trying to trying him out. Just be um just be yeah. very careful of your 12 inches and just let him do his job, right? Um and if you yeah. if you're struggling with him, just keep him within 12 and and kind of sit him behind the unit and just go that way. Um and don't overextend yourself and and, you, and you'll see that the two minus one damage is just going to pay so many dividends for you. The Dreadblade Harrow was an auto include in every single one of my lists. Every list, yeah. Out. Such a good uh, unit. Because he could teleport wherever he wanted to go, and then I would always make him the general because then he could teleport and then pull a unit towards him, you know, yep. um, with the special summons. Uh, he loses that ability to pull a unit to him. There's no special summons anymore, right? Yep. Um, that was given to Alrock the Drowner. Um, but he still can teleport. Yep. Um, and uh, once per battle round, which is again quite a—I uh, mean, not quite a few. Uh, that's what five. Uh, yep, five, five times. Five rounds. Um, he can echo essentially a command from uh, a command ability from the general. Yep. Um, how do you feel about this? Yeah, the only time that that's really going to be useful at all is your five up ward save. Um, uh-huh. yeah. I, I I just I I'm not seeing the 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 value. Um, in in this guy unfortunately from um just yeah. maybe maybe it's the play style i do but <clears throat> i try not to put myself in a position of using a ton of cp as it is um and yeah. i just i'm just not seeing it uh with this guy unfortunately he's one of those he's another one of those characters that like i was saying in the beginning you got to be careful um everybody seems good but you gotta take your build and go with it right if you're taking a yeah. if you're playing a build that's super cp heavy maybe you take this guy right but I, i'm just not seeing right. it Lord Executioner, don't take. <laughs> yeah, better than he was, right? But just still no. Just, yeah, yeah. Leave that guy at home. Tomb Banshee, don't take. Yeah, um, she's got she got interesting. <laughs> lost uh lost that Mortal Rune Scream, so just just not as fun. Yeah. Um, you basically get a yeah. worse version of Lumineth's spell, so yeah, not taking her. Exactly. Um, the Karen Wraith could be interesting with that um artifact that you said, but. Um, yeah, he's a okay. he's a bit of a, a MSU or not a MSU. I'm sorry, he's a bit of a um, horde blender. Um, I think we'll see hordes come back a little bit, but as it is right now, you're not yep. you're not you're not taking this guy. Uh, so uh, the Guardian of Souls, I think you take him if you've got Chain Wrath. He is uh, um he's my second guy I pick, uh, second second hero okay. I pick, and I'll get there's there's really he does three pretty important things and they're all pretty you know what it says on the tin kind of thing for him right, um plus one to wound, it's just pretty good yeah. just in general um yeah. just just good, good to have yeah just good to have in your army, um that's that's kind of reason number one and the the, the worst reason this the the second best reason I think you're taking him is um for his uh his his war scroll spell where if you're in a pinch yep. right you gotta have a couple of guys back yeah you can take that and just 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 bring yeah. some wounds back um but the biggest you reason i'm taking this rolled guy. snake guys on that spell. <laughs> yeah exactly right so many times <laughs> uh, but the biggest reason right. i'm taking him is because he is um as i said kind of when we were going over the spells i, I want I, I try uh, to shoehorn yes. two spells into my list yes. um yes. so i'm giving him seal of shish and he is going to be giving one of my units the five up save. Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, that's yep. uh, that's good to know. And now you love also the spirit torment. That's my number one. He goes in every single list. Um, yeah. This guy has gotten better with the new the new book. It used to be you'd had to to kill three uh, models in the opponent's army for this to go off. Now it just flat out goes off all the time. Um, it also used yeah. to be D three. So much better. Yeah, it also oh my, it's so much better. Um, it also used to be D three uh, wounds allocated can be healed. Now it's flat three, flat three models That's back ridiculous. every single. Yeah. Uh, is it still battle shock phase? Nope, end of the combat phase. Interesting. So at the end of the combat phase, you just yep. get three guys back. Um, you got to be holy within yeah. twelve. But it's that's 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 very doable. So flat three guys back every single combat phase, yeah. not just your combat phase, every combat phase. So 
the spirit uh, the guardian of souls seems to be the guy that heals things in this army because you get d6 models back no 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 yeah. no it's this guy this is the one because he's bringing back right. six six wounds every every battle round as opposed to d6 it doesn't require spell or nothing no ifs ands or buts you're just getting three back and that is yeah. i i can't overstate the usefulness for this um and this guy is is what i've been playing with in my nagash list um if you take nagash now you're getting four back um uh, so do you um do you run two of them uh, there are some lists that I do to two. Um, I, I do one generally. Okay. Uh, throw the arcane tome on them. That's where I get my other spell out of them. The the minus okay. one wound. Okay. Um, but I, I'm always taking one. Sometimes I'm taking two, depending on the list. Um, if I'm taking yeah. like a blade guy spam or a dread scythe spam, yes, he is. There's yeah. two of these. Um, if I'm just yeah. really have kind of like one big unit, yeah, I just need the one. You know. Yeah. So Very love, good. love this guy. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you like chain gas at all, or? Um, you, yeah, they're useful. They're because you're taking the spirit torment every game. They they're at least going to be able to use their plus one, add one to hit rolls. Um, yeah. So the the big problem with them is like, I don't mind needing to keep a unit um, still in our our classic twelve inch holy within night haunt bubble. Yeah. I don't yeah. love having to do it with two separate units like the. So now I have to keep. Yeah. A unit within 12 for for this one and the uh the spirit torment the spirit torment's much much yeah. easier um just because it's at the end of the combat phase so it's after their your opponent attacks you can just kill off uh models until you're holy within 12 and then you'll just bring ba your models right, back right. this guy these guys you got to be holy within when you make your attacks um that's much more difficult to do that's particularly hard. when you do charges you yeah it's yeah. just it's just much harder to do. So um, I don't love these guys just generally in every list. They are interestingly the cheapest unit in the book. Um, so if you have yourself an extra ninety five points somewhere, you could do much worse than these guys. Uh, but you know I, I'm not taking these guys generally. They're not finding their ways into many lists. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. So that was like again we talked about how hero heavy. Yeah, um, so many heroes, right? Right, Hunters, right? Yeah. And uh, I think it was important to kind of go through each one a little bit because uh, there's some traps in there. You yeah, know? for like, sure. I think the Dreadblade Arrow is a good example of that, where you're like, oh, wow, this guy is, this guy's amazing. And maybe you can find a list where he is really that amazing, but he's not um, as good as you think he is. Yeah, you know? and everything uh, I just said was just so. generally speaking, right? So there's, there's obviously yeah, right, you're going to be obviously. able to find ways to make things work, but just generally um, off the – yeah, off the top um, – yeah, I think I think it was useful to go through all of them. So um, we've talked about Bleed Guys Revenant pretty like yeah. you know in, in the list that we have. Yep. Um, Craven Th Throne Guard. I don't <laughs> see any reason why you would ever take these. They're so bad. Oh man, such yeah, such a wasted opportunity, right? Finally get some shooting and death, and this is what they come out with. Um, I am oh, struggling. Gosh. What are they shooting? Ghost bolts? What, I just don't like? see how these are even close to the to the points costs, right? No. I just yeah. five wounds on a five up save, or a four up yeah. save. I'm sorry, five wounds on a four yeah. up save with a twelve inch shooting attack, fours fours. Yeah, it's just this is, this is not good. This is just not good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway. Uh, chain rats. I mean, they are kind of what they are. Yeah, right? they are what uh, they are. I'm not. I'm not finding that I'm taking them super often as much as I I was. Um, but not for any not for any real reason other than the um I, I kind of like some other units right now. But if you're just looking for a unit to be that extra kind of pain in the butt unit that's going to um uh, add to your wave of terror, you could do worse than your 115 or I think I think 115 ish points. Um, for just unit 10 chain rats. But 20 attacks is not yeah. nothing. So, you know, uh, just chuck them in. 110 yeah. points. 110, there you go. Yeah. Um, and look, they, their move got upgraded to 8 inches. Which yeah. I think is huge for them. It is big, actually. Yeah. That is a big change for them. Yeah, they were 6, right? Now so, they're uh, now they're yep, a 10. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I won, I won games. Uh, I won Duality of Death against Slanesh when, like, the Kedra list was a big thing, right? Yeah. Um, because I was able to one drop my army pretty much, and run those chain rafts just to the other side of the objective, yep. and just keep them there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so yeah. having eight inches now 
to be able to get to those objectives and and tank a little bit. Like they can tank a little bit. They're not spirit host, right? But they right. can do a little bit. Yeah, and with so, your five up uh, five up ward now, right? You don't have to have yeah. them sitting next to a, a, a hero for your six up, <clears throat> and you can give them a five up ward with their champion, right? So now you've got uh, yep. um, now you've got your five up save with a five up ward, and and anybody that's played uh, daughters with her Hagnar knows what a five up five up can do for you. It's something like fifty eight percent damage. So that's it's harder than it looks to yeah. take out ten of them. Yeah. Um, yes. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, like, like way more than if you were to go against like 10 skinks or 10 reavers or yeah. something like that. Right? Probably one of the hardest, stuff. like, yeah, 10 man little, little units in the game to yeah. take out right now, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, group gas reapers. Um, uh, these are kind of interesting because yeah. they, they're, you know, they, they took a huge hit points wise in 2.0 when everybody started using them in Legion of the Gas. Yeah. Right, and yep. I was like, this, so, this sucks because, like, in Night Hot, they're still like pretty good, but yep. they were amazing in Legion of the Gap. Yeah, right? so you know, they, they took that hit, unfortunately. Uh, there's still 160 points for yep. um, a unit of 10. Uh, but what do you think about them? So, they're actually, unless you're the, so let's let's just look at this from a from a purely I guess, math and damage perspective, right? If you yeah. are taking a unit of, say, 10 or 20, doesn't matter, um, of a, of one of the three kind of damage dealers in the book, right? I think, in my opinion, uh, of the the kind of what you would say foot soldiers. So you got your uh, Grim Gas, you got Blade Geist, and you have Dread Scythes. Grim Gas yeah. are better than um, Blade Geists. They, uh, they actually will end up with more attacks because of their two-inch reach. Um, they have the same Ren, same damage. Um, their wound is the same, and then their hit rolls a little worse. But with the thing that with all out attack exists in this game, you can get it to the same. So they actually do more damage than blade geists do. Yeah. Um, you're taking blade geists and scarlet host, but if you're not taking scarlet host and you just need a unit of like 20 of something to go do some stuff, these guys are your guys you're taking. Yeah. Um, if you're taking right. uh, quicksilver dead, you're taking your herodrins obviously. But I think a lot of people yeah. are going to be taking emerald host. And I think these guys are the ones to yeah. go for an Emerald Host. Surprisingly, they you know they don't look like it on the on paper, but they are better. Right. So if you, um, they their Reflight Corn ability changed mm -hmm. right from being able to reroll all failed hits. Yeah. Um, to add one to the attacks characteristics, um, is that better or worse? That's. That's an interesting question. I think it's worse just because rerolls existing in this game were kind of broken, um, and I'm glad that they're kind of going away from it. So it is a little worse, but when you're getting them up to three attacks now each, um, suddenly they have double the amount of attacks as blade geists, um, and you can still give right. them their all at attack, and you're just you're just going to be going to town with these things. I think these are actually very good. Um, for, for what they are and what you're trying to do with them. I'm not sure you're taking just a unit maybe of, you know, three units of 10 of them to fulfill battle line. There's other ways to do that, like Chain Rasp or something. Yeah. But if you're looking for a yeah. unit of 20 of something to go and hit stuff, yeah, these guys uh, these guys are pretty good. And throw, yeah, throw the Cruciator with them. And yeah, exactly. Them, them now you're, work. yeah, minus one damage on them, and you are, you are in business. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Spirit Host we talked about. Um, they yep. still have that... What's cool about them now is they have the bodyguard uh, ability on their war scroll, right? Yep, which super good bad. for them. Yep. They did lose that um, frightful touch ability. Yeah, which is a little, you know, stinks a little bit, but yeah. um, got plus one to hit. So now they're fours and fours, which is pretty good. They're, you know, yeah, it's better. They needed it. Um, they have a plus two to move, so now they're eight inch move, just like the hex race are, which is pretty good. Um, yeah. so they're keeping up with your heroes. They're just they're just defending heroes, right? So you're just taking three yes. of them. Um, you could do better. Yeah. Uh, things to make some solid blocks of, of unkillable stuff in the the army. Um, and you're not taking, I don't think, these guys as your battle line either. So um, you're just right. to, you're just taking these guys to protect Lady Olinder or uh, your Spirit Torment, in my opinion. So yeah. they're good. You're going to see them in lists, but you're not going to see them to do anything other than that, which is fine. And yeah. every unit that you uh, add, yeah. yeah, every unit that you add is just another one to give you a uh, minus one to save for your charges, right? So... <laughs> Right. Doesn't hurt to have more. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Uh, Dread Scythe Heritage we talked about. Um, yep. Glaive Wraith Stalkers. Ha, so um, these ones are funny, have right? Never, 
like there's never been good these poor guys yeah four it's these four four wounds right four wounds for 115 yeah. i think they are uh with four attacks yeah. sure two damage but you know whatever i think yeah. there is maybe maybe something you could say about taking one or two of these units okay. um to listen. stack to stack for uh your uh wave of terror um just more wave of terror chances they are going to get in combat with whatever they're attack or they're charging into because they get the yeah. add three to charge if you pick the prey right i think the thing that you have yeah. to do you have to pick them so it's not as useful but you know don't forget that everything in this army um makes it so that you can't use an inspiring presence so having bubbles right. of of units around to do to do that is is useful but I, yeah, I, I'm not off the. Obviously, I think these guys are probably the worst unit in the book. Um, and yeah. there's maybe the maybe <laughs> something in here about being able to charge stuff for sure. But yeah, yeah, that's just not. It's just yeah, they're just not the ones, right? So. Um, all right, Mir Miraborn Banshees, all 48 of them. Oh uh, yeah, I'm on 48 of them. Yeah, they're <laughs> they're interesting. They're better now than they were, right? So plus one, it's, they, they got an extra attack. But the and they're two damage instead of D three, which is pretty much always better. But their um their their spell ignore thing is no longer just an unbind. So it, it it's just flat out ignore, right? So uh, that's good. I I don't know. I really really like them as just kind of sitting in the middle of your army. If you're if you're I think this is maybe a meta dependent thing. If you're playing against a bunch of armies and you find yourself sitting with uh, tons of um super strong maybe Lumineth, something like that, sitting around where they're just yeah, tossing right. spells at you all the time. These guys can be useful. Goose girls can be useful. Um, I think as general rule, take all comers, you're not going to be taking these too often. Yeah, so um, they... I'd have to look at the old book, but didn't they have it to where if they unbound um, a spell, they, add, got, they got an extra attack? Yep, if they unbound the spell, they got an extra attack, and if they dispelled something, they got an extra attack, but they take some damage. But uh, right. yeah, so you could you could get them up to you know four attacks. I I think at one point I was getting them up to four attacks each, and you could ally in your necromancer to make them fight twice. So there was use for them there. They're a little bit yes less useful for that now. They're still gonna hit a little harder in combat than I think most people will give them credit for. Um, yeah. Just because the two attacks each base now, so so not right. terrible. Um, but I think you're taking them for the utility of the ignore the spell thing. So. Um, and you're just and not going to see that cannon super often. They are very glass cannony, right? So 105 points for four wounds is, is yeah. peak night hot, right? It's just yeah. so many points per yeah. wound. So so I don't think you're going to see them tons. All right, let's talk about the black coach. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> this uh, thing is... The old black coach. Old black old coach. Old black coach I actually liked. Old I, black I coach was so good right so good especially at so the good. end for 200 yes. points find me a better war score right so no Seriously. yeah so so it was the, the the thing that the black coach used to be able to do is that nimbus of power thing where it could bring back um models so good yep. uh it used to just, you know charge yourself up heal itself do all sorts of stuff it's lost a little bit of a trick with that because you can't heal itself now um right. Right. which is a little unfortunate but the uh, the I, I have played it once, right? So I took it uh, to a friendly game, and I got it. You get it up to its you know max power level or whatever the five to six next to it for its four up ward, and uh -huh. the thing is, a, yeah. I mean, it's literally a tank, right? It's literally what it is. Yeah. So um, it's not it's not bad. I don't think it's a bad choice, but for three hundred fifty five, it's a little bit expensive for what it does now, unfortunately. Um, yeah. yeah. It's got that it's got that teleport to it, which is cool too. But um yeah yeah it it, it yeah <clears throat> if the uh, if the shooting attack thing the once per turn 3d3 mortals thing was not on a two up as we've talked about just you you know you're gonna roll that right. one when you need it um if it wasn't on that yeah. and if the 3d3 mortals you did um added back to it to it to its uh, little counter so you could just keep doing 3d3 mortals as long as you did enough damage. I think it would be yeah. worth 355 as it is. It's a little bit expensive, but take one. And, and I think yeah. you'd be surprised at how much it tanks. Yeah, I I like um, the the problem with the Nimbus of Power of the last one is that if you have a couple bad rolls, that yeah. doesn't charge up. 
you know and mm-hmm. and a lot of its cool abilities came when you started getting it to that like level three level four right you know um where it's like retreating and charging it's doing mortals on the charges it's summoning dudes back it's you know like it's unstoppable you know right <laughs> like it's getting crazy and uh and uh you know i mean that thing still though like even if it wasn't charged up and i, I learned this the hard way like even if it's not charged up, you need to throw that thing into combat because yeah. it still had a lot of great mortal uh, wound abilities, like with the Reaper or Scythe, mm-hmm. you know, that it had. And then, um, you know, the chilling touch from the spirit, um, the the ghosty boys on the side. Yeah. And then the teeth and hooves were always the MVP for some reason. <laughs> always are, you know, right? Like they were always, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like they were always great. And so, um, now you again you don't have that nimbus of power so i don't think you're doing nearly as much of the uh, mortal wound output as you could before mm-hmm. i do like that 3d3 thing that's great but i mean you got to get this thing in combat and fighting quickly to really make use of it yeah so, you know yeah it, it's okay yeah, and it, it's okay. it being uh, up 155 points i think for me is the thing that is the the biggest change yeah. that kind of hurts it quite a bit so yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, let's not talk about the Briar Queen or Thorns of the Briar Queen. They're fine. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, Hex Race. Yeah, so these you changed like a ton, Race. right? Yeah. They I did. absolutely love this unit, though. I'll be honest. This is... They have... They grew on me at playing with them. Um, but now uh-huh. with them, they've... They, <sighs> where to start? So they lost their six... Their six mortals. Uh, mortals on sixes. Fine. Whatever. They did. But they, they lost gained. their... They lost yep. their um, five up wounds when they move over stuff. Also, that does right. kind of hurt, right? They gained plus one to hit, so they're just now flat threes to hit, threes to wound, minus one, one damage. Um, but they gained. Which is huge. That's big they, for them. It, it is big. They gained D3 mortals when they charge on a two up, obviously, but yep. D3 mortals when they charge, and you're taking MSU, so if you're taking, you're taking like three or four units of these guys, you're just, you're just flat out doing. You know, uh, you can count on basically two two mortals per unit. So if you got three units, six mortal wounds. So you just kind of charge into stuff and start tossing out mortal yeah. wounds places. Um, and then the big thing, right? 24-inch move on them. And you can't charge when you do it, obviously. But right. if you take a u- couple unit of hex race, even just two, and you, you, you take first turn and you just kind of like chuck those things forward, you can move block the entire opponent's army for the first turn. Um, and in a game that requires capturing objectives, that is so, so useful uh, to be able right. to just stop them from moving. It, Yeah, I, you know. And there are four up ward, or a, a four up save with a six up ward and ten wounds each um, in, a, in a unit of five. Yeah, it's not just going to yeah. be like nothing for the, for the your opponent to, to go through them. So you might be able to stop for two turns. And suddenly you're stopping right. an army for two turns. Yeah, I'll take that every time. Right, right. Um, yeah, I... Uh, yeah, what do you think? Let me hear I, it. Um, I think that I, I think that, that move block thing is useful. Um, but if you're taking hex rays, um, unless, you're, unless you're, they're kind of like in addition to like um, your Quicksilver, you know, dead legion or something like that, like, if they're really the base of your army, you're going to want them attacking. You're going to want them getting into stuff. So I think the idea of, like, just, like, having them as a move blocker um, kind of puts your army at risk, especially if you, you know, throwing them into somewhere where they're going to get blended back, like, by maybe witch elves or something like that. Sure. You know what I mean? mm mm-hmm. um, So, I mean, that's obviously a gamble, um, you know, doing the move blocking thing. I... I think that 24 inch move is like ridiculously awesome i i think that's amazing but the fact that you can't charge after that and i know why they did it right like yeah i mean that threat range would be stupid (laughs) yeah that's would be ridiculous yeah um so i know why they did it but you know um uh to me that's just like okay i'm gonna you know capture a lonely objective which is okay Mm -hmm. um but yeah, I don't know. I I I think I think on paper, if you just look at the war scroll, and maybe this is why I was down on them. I, I you're you're kind of turning me around a little bit, and uh, but I was down on them mostly because I'm like, okay, they still only have two attacks. They don't have the mortals on sixes, 
So, you know, you have five of them, that's ten attacks. You know, you're only going to get, like, three through, maybe, you mm -hmm. know. So, three damage. But what it doesn't say on paper are those um, save, save uh, wave of terror stacking. The exactly, game. yeah. All yeah. of a sudden, that adds up quite a bit. You know what I mean? It does, yep. And, and the hooves and teeth all of a sudden have, quote-unquote, rend as well. Yep. Yeah, and they've also uh, okay. they've also added one to hit, so now it's fours and fours on those too. So, um, yep. yeah, I, I I know what so you mean. You basically than I thought they were. you're basically when you when you if you're doing the the strategy of you know sending them forward, you're accepting that you're going to lose them. And if you're taking, I yeah. think you need really two units to do it effectively. That's 320 points just kind of gone. Um, yeah, the argument can be made. It's worth it. You know, 320 points is is worth uh, stopping an army of for that a turn. Of like, yeah, so yeah. I. I Totally, totally, totally. I think what you're there's there's movement in this game is such a cool and and, and um, kind of yeah. thing that'll win you a lot of games. So how about if you instead of just thinking about mood blocking, you think of mood blocking and now my my turn one uh, battle tactic is uh, Savage Spearhead. So now I just get that kind right. of for free, and now I can worry about the rest of the army. Yeah. Or you know, That's there's a, yeah. uh, there's a there's certain like yeah, and then maybe maybe I don't do um just send them forward. Maybe maybe the army the other guy's sl army is uh, slow enough or fast enough that it's not going to matter if I do that. Well, I'll just keep him on the side and and kind of wait, and I'll just wait for him to move off an objective, and suddenly yeah. I've got five to ten 24 inch move flying guys that I can just put on an objective to take it from somebody. So. Yeah. yeah, they're they're on paper maybe not so great. I think they're very situational, and I, it's kind of like the crew guess where a good player is going to get a lot of use out of these things. Uh, here's where I do like them. I really like them as like giving two units, uh, you know, I'd say like two units of five in a um, you know a quicksilver dead, you know, mm -hmm. procession where um, you're adding a lot of mobility to um, to your list mm -hmm. and a lot of threat, right? Like, yeah. So um, they may see like, oh, crap, I've got all these dread size heritage coming at me, but they're ignoring the 24-inch range of those hex right. rays, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, too, is you can start those hex rays on the board, put your other units up in the uh, – or in the underworld, right? Yep. And um, you've got a very mobile – army at that point yeah because you have your entire army that can get anywhere on the board pretty much. anywhere they want to go you yep. know so exactly yeah so um i like the i don't i don't know if i love hex rays as like uh, building an entire army around them but in terms of having like two maybe three units that like can really threaten behind another like as part of another procession i like that i do like them a lot more yeah and, and worst know. comes worst case scenario you've got their their mortals on the charge thing so um yeah. it's just the, the utility of having that right in an army that doesn't have tons of mortal wounds that's where you're really getting your mortal yeah. wounds from so yeah absolutely so let's uh we i know we're like at two hours and 12 minutes we've talking so long about this stuff it's great. <laughs> i could talk forever um, i know it's my fault i keep I know, <laughs> keep rambling I it's all good uh but let's let's uh let's talk some lists like what what sure. you um like what combos are you looking at right now yeah, I'll give you just like we, a, maybe like one or two good ones. Too. Yeah, so yeah. so the the real quick the the one I started off the the show I guess with is is that um, Nagash one, and I'll continue using yeah. Nagash. Uh, but I've got I'm gonna be taking Nagash. I've got the Spirit Torment, uh, Rule of the Spirit Hosts, Arcane Tome, and he's actually interestingly since Nagash can do it all, I don't really need to shoehorn it in. But there's really no other good, you know. There's no other good artifact. So I'm taking taking uh, Arcane uh -huh. Tome, and I'm taking Spectral Tether on him, actually. So just having okay. a, a, a hero that maybe like turn four, turn five, I can teleport onto an objective that's sitting still. I mean, that's uh -huh. value, right? Um, yeah. And this is in uh, Emerald Host, by the way. Um, so I'm taking I'm taking a gash in Emerald Host. He's not really that useful in any of the other ones, I don't think. So I've got Nagash, got the Spirit Torment. I'm taking two units of t uh, five hex wraiths um just just okay. for movement ability right i just need a couple extra units they're uh they're battle line so they're they're great and then instead of nine spirit hosts i've got 30 grim gas reapers and i'm taking 30 grim gas reapers because we were talking they they can do some damage on their own right well really the reason i'm taking them is because um 
the rest, uh, the the two last parts of the list is the Emerald Spell Portal for Nagash, and then I'm taking Emerald Life Swarm. Um, it used to be where you couldn't take um, a you could you could only take one endless spell per wizard in your army, right? Well, yeah. Arcane Tome makes the Spirit Torment a wizard, and it used to be that that artifact did not allow you to take an extra um, endless spell. It now does, so I can now take the Emerald Life Swarm. So what that means for this list in particular uh... is that Nagash will be bringing back four Grimgast Reapers per turn in my hero phase, flat out. He will then make the spirit with combination with the spirit torment and um, Nagash's ability to bring back an extra one. I will be getting back an extra four more in my combat phase. I will be getting back four more in the enemy or my opponent's combat phase. And then I will be yeah. getting back one plus D three, both when I set up my Emerald Life Swarm and in between all battle rounds, whenever it moves. So now I'm getting... In a, in a battle round, provided I, you know, the, the turn I cast it, I'm getting four from Nagash, eight from my Spirit Torment, so I'm up to 12 back, and then uh, two plus D3 more. So it's between, wow. uh, it's yeah, it's between 18 and 22 Grim Gas Reapers back every battle round, which is just oh my bananas. Gosh. It's just bananas. You know, with uh, with Nagash's uh, command ability to make their Grim Gas Reapers um ward plus one and the spell yeah. that gives them a five up ward they're going to be getting a, a their four up save with a four up ward and oh then also 18 to 22 back per per battle round um i'm just i'm just struggling to see you know how you can kill it and then the best part is if you do kill it i've got rule of the spirit hosts where i can roll yeah. a four up and I'll get 15 of them back. <laughs> and now you got to do it again oh. with likely less models. Yeah. I, I just, I'm just really, really loving the way that this list looks. It's basically how I've been playing uh, Night Haunt, um, just with a, a slight change in that I'm taking the Grim Gasts over the Spirit Hosts. So that's that's the first no, one I no got. No kidding. No kidding. That sounds like a Legion of Blood Night Haunt list. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's. I mean, maybe maybe all those years of Legion of Blood is is showing through, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, what I was looking at, this is my Dread Scythe Herodons list right now. Yeah, let's hear it. Um, I've got uh, the Cruel Gas Cruciator as my general. Okay. Um, I've got uh, a Guardian of Souls. I've got a Spirit Torment with an Arcane Tome on it, another Spirit Torment. Nice. Um, I've got uh, four units of ten Herodons, two units of five Hex Rays, um, a unit of three Spirit Hosts to go with my... Um, Probably my Guardian of Souls, believe it or not. Yep. You know. Um, okay. And then I, I decided to throw the Black Coach on there. Of course. Yeah, the Black Coach is just so, such yeah. such a cool thing. Yeah. And I, I've used it, and it was good. So I don't I don't mean to make it all doom and gloom on the Black Coach. Yeah. It is still a solid, solid unit. I, I like this because with the Black Coach and the Hex Wraith, you've got projected power that you could send yep. out. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, and the Herodons can... Um, you know they can they can wreck some damage where you need to. I originally had a bunch of chain rasps in here, being like, okay, I need my anvil and here's some hammer or whatever. And sure. It's like, yeah, let's go mobile. Let's go yeah. more mobile with this. You know. And you so, can with this army, um, right? It's just yeah. you can't tie it down. Period. So you can get wherever you need to go and wherever you want to go. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my uh, that's kind of my heritage list right now. If if I wasn't crazy about. Um, if I felt like I needed more Herodons, I'd probably end up dropping the Spirit Host and adding another uh, 10 Herodons. Sure. But that would be like 50, so I don't right. know. <laughs> you know. Maybe not know needed, if right? 50. If, yeah. 40 can't do the, if 40 can't do the job, is 50 going to do it? I don't know. Right. You know? Um, so, yeah, they're they're yeah. interesting like that, right? Like Blade Geist lists tend to have upwards of 60 of them, um, but that's because yeah. you know every one Blade Geist is giving you an extra dice. Um, for the mortal, yeah. the dread scythe yeah. list doesn't need it because they're just going to chew through whatever they all you know get into, right? So you're basically just trading yeah. pieces at that point. Um, and so yeah. you, you'll take, yeah, you'll take uh, basically one every turn. You're charging a unit in and, and taking out whatever you charge. So yeah, I like that a lot. That's cool. Um, yeah, I, I'll, we'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you, you want me? I'll give you another one. So Let's this one, that. this one is yeah, a little different, it. right? So uh, so this one is a uh, scarlet host. This one's a Blade Geist okay. kind of one. So 
I'll go through the uh, the battle line first. So I've got um, three units of 20 Bladegeist Revenants as my battle line. Okay. I've got a Spirit Torment. Um, yeah. Surprise, surprise. He's got the Arcane Tome. He's got... Yeah. Um, and he's taking Shade Mist just to make one of those units harder to kill. I've got a Guardian yeah. of Souls who's taken the Seal to, again, make one of those units harder to kill. Yep. I have a Cruel Ghast... Um, and what he's going to be doing is he's going to be dropping down with one of the units of Blade Geists, um, as we were yes. talking about, where I'm, I'm just going to make one basically hard to kill. <laughs> um, so now they're all pretty difficult to kill. And then I'm taking Big Drog Fort Kicker, the Mercenary Gargant. Oh. So I've got 60 Blade Geists to do yeah. and kind of like bop around and do all my stuff. I've got three Ooh. support heroes yeah. that are going to help those guys out. And then I've got a giant Gargant. And uh, gonna wreak havoc wherever this at. the Gargan, the Gatebreaker is obviously clearly the best Gargan. Um, and we're yep. lucky as death players to be able to just grab him whenever we want. He is uh, he is such yep. a terror. Um, yeah. it just this 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 list basically gives you four solid uh units that'll do your damage for you. Um, that's you know, a lot of threat, it's a lot of threat, right? Nothing that the, your opponent chooses to attack is really helpful or good for them. Um, so right. that's kind of the point, right? It's just threat overload. And you've got you've got pretty good board presence on there too, right? Yeah, like thirty two mils. Don't have to worry about. Yeah, thirty two mils yeah. on your uh, your blade geists is pretty big, so you can block off a lot of the board. Um, and then you always have with right with Nighthaunt, you always have that ability to pull out three units. Um, so if you're finding yourself yeah. playing an army that is maybe a little spread or thin, you can you can you know. Pull up some more of your units and and drop them wherever you need them on the board. Um, and that's going to help yep. so much with getting units where they need to go, right? Yeah, for sure. Especially especially if you have a gargant on the table, right? Like that's going to be the main focus of mm -hmm. of um, you know whoever you're playing, and they're going to be like, oh wait, there's more up in the you know. Or yeah, the right. Exactly. Like, it's like, kind of like a lose lose, right? If they choose to go after yeah. the gargant. You've got 60 blade geists that are going to mortal wound you to death, um, and if you choose to yeah. go after the blade geists, you're not going after this giant, this gargant, right? The, it's with his rend three, three damage, ten attacks. Um, you know, he, they're just they're, the gargant is just a solid piece. Um, I think you you can do yeah. much worse. Um, and it, like we were saying before, right? There's no real beat stick in the army, so he is kind of the beat stick. So. Yeah, that, yeah, he seems to be a fun yeah. one. I'm not sure exactly if that's the most competitive you can get with the list, the army, but I I do kind of like that one off the top. So. I mean, you know, it, yeah, like that that could be that could be very good. Like obviously, you're not getting all the full benefits of the gargants, right? Um, yeah, of course because not. Because yeah. he's a mercenary. That's yeah, he's in, not but, counting as um, thirty on the objective and stuff like that. But, but he is yeah. he is quite the uh, he's quite the the threat. damage dealer. Yeah. Right, and he's a threat. So you're, I mean, that list you're looking to destroy. Yeah, so you're just going to crush, right? List. Yeah, that one's more of a, I think, a fun list because you're, you're just kind of like yeah. moving around this giant dude and, and uh, literally giant dude and and having fun with your your ghost guys and, yeah, I think that's yeah. a fun one. Very good. Yeah, lots of lots of good stuff out there. Um, for our listeners, you should check out Nate's uh, Twitter. I know you posted like four lists today on Twitter. I think I did like six of them. Um, yeah, I, I, six I, of them. Yeah. Yeah, I do this you, thing where like I go and there. yeah, I go into my uh, um, the AOS app and I build lists a lot. Um, I find myself deleting them all the time just because I like to have it clean in there for some reason when I pull uh -huh. it up. Um, and so I always end up losing all the lists I build. So um, sometimes I'll just kind of dump them all on there so I can always go back and see what I see what I was thinking at the time. Um, plus it's fun to go back and see like you know in two months. How are lists going to be different? What have we, what are we going to learn yeah. about this book that's going to be different? And it's just fun to see um, where our brain was at at the time. It'll be interesting, especially as we move into the next uh, General's Handbook and Season of War. Yeah. Which yep. um, has us moving to more in infantry, yep. which I think benefits um, oh, yeah. Night Haunt quite a bit because yep. our things are designed to chew up some infantry. We're designed uh, no, to chew up infantry, we, and we are infantry, right? Yeah. Like that's kind of the that's exactly. kind of the whole point of the army, yeah. right? Um, so yeah, yeah, anything that benefits our battle lines, which is we can make almost anything, um, is going to be super helpful. Yeah. 
But like you look at the, you know, you look at the blade guys being able to do those mortal wounds. You look at the dread scythe heritage with four attacks, you know, coming at you, um, you know, potentially on threes and threes. Uh, like that just, you know, will chew through um, infantry that's got like a five up save or a yeah. four up save even, you know. And if so, it's got a three up save, um, guess what? Yeah. We've got wave of terror, so we've got an answer yeah, exactly. um, for for everything. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So I'm excited about it. I can't wait to play. I need to. I need to get my boys out on the table soon. And uh, I'm glad that you've been able to test some of this stuff out. And I can't wait to see how you end up doing in some of these tournaments coming up. Yeah, um, as super we go. And I'm sure that we'll have our competing night haunts at the Nova Open together. So, That's right. You know, <laughs> Tables. Uh, we'll be on table one and two together, right? Just, just two guys yeah, hanging exactly. out with their night haunt. <laughs> It'll be great. Well, Nate, thank yeah. you so much for coming on the show. Um, loved having you two hours and 24 minutes in. And <laughs> yeah, we, dude, we could still be talking about right. that easily. I don't shut up, know? do I? So, yeah. <laughs> no, no, thanks for okay. having me, man. It's, I, it's so much fun to be able to kind of talk about all this stuff and, and get it all on, get it all my thoughts out. And especially with somebody that also has kind of a passion for it, right? You, you were, yeah, uh, you were absolutely. a long time night hunt player. I've just discovered it. Um, over the vampires, right? But I'm having such a fun time yeah. with the with the ghosts. Well, welcome, welcome to the club. I right. Guess, right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, thank you, uh, thank you, everyone, to listening to our uh, ep- our, our uh, episode tonight. If you've got any feedback you'd like to give us, if you have any questions about Night Hot, you can hit us up on Twitter. We're at Tabletop and Beyond, um, and also on Facebook. You know, at Facebook slash Tabletop and Beyond. Um, check us out and, uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, just, uh, let us know. Cause we, I'm sure we'd love to answer anything about night hunt for you. So, uh, thanks for listening and we'll catch you next time. Have a good night, everybody. Bye.